Take a break from the action and check out all your Bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to Fear the Fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseballs. The Gear Shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stuffed BB the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark at Harbor Yard and is open on game days. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. Can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at BridgeportBluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop, perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Miller Lite wants you to win the greatest weekend that never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Miller Lite taste points for your chance to win one of a hundred Vegas trips being given away this summer for the big weekend. So grab Miller Lite and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happened. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where prohibited. Sweet stakes begins 5112 and ends 812. For details on winner and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Time. Don't check your wrist or follow up with your supervisor. Because Miller Time has nothing to do with when and everything to do with who. What's up, Tommy? Miller Lite is brewed for the guys you're proud to call your brothers. We'll always talk you out of getting that faux hawk and never talk nice. during your backswing. And when you've got your brothers and the light beer that tastes like a beer should, it's not just a good time. It's Miller Time. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Miller Time. It's a rallying cry to the men around you, the ones that have become your brothers. A call to beer is answered with... Order me a Miller Lite, I'll be there in 10. A night where your crew gets down to the task at hand that may or may not involve running tables. Oh, oh, I say, nice. Firing up the grill. Oh, oh, or nice. getting the band back together. Two, three, five. Oh. Just a few choice words spoken to the right man. Yeah. And then you crave a light beer that's never light on taste. Because it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Bring your responsibility. The Bluefish have been rocking on this road trip as they are moving forward in the Atlantic League schedule. They have a 9-3 record. They own the best record in the Atlantic League, and they will be taking on the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs today. Hello, everyone. I am Perry Miles. Great to be here on the Bluefish broadcast. Bridgeport won last night's game, second consecutive extra innings game. 
in 10 innings by a score of 4-3. to three. Eddie Rogers came up with a big two-run shot off of Jim Ed Warden following Pedro Lopez in his lead after he provided an RBI single in the 10th. The Bluefish held off the Blue Crabs after who singled home a run, but Jeremy Owens was thrown out at the plate. It led to a ba- the walk, which reloaded the bases with a 4-3 to three game. Jonah Bayless on the hill. Who knows what would have happened, but Brian Barton struck out. It was followed by a secondary strikeout from Mike Daniel to end the ball game. A, an interesting one last night between the Bluefish and the Blue Crabs, which brings this point up. Bluefish ahead of the Blue Crabs by three games heading into today's action. It is Matt Pike going to the hill for the Bluefish against former double-A guy from the New York Yankees, Ben Moore. Right-handed pitcher has pitched in independent baseball for most of the last six or seven years and was with Southern Maryland toward the end of last season as he allowed them to propel in the race for the right to go to the postseason. Ben Moore has been solid this year. One win, one loss, an ERA of less than two against Pike, whose record also is 1-1 one one with an ERA of three. It is righty, righty today. We've seen some fantastic pitching matchups through the first couple of days, and we are probably looking at another doozy for this morning's game on a kid's day from Waldorf, Maryland. When we come back on the Bluefish broadcast, we'll have the starting lineups. We'll have thoughts about last night's contest, and then off to first pitch from Regency Furniture Stadium. You're listening to Perry Miles on BridgeportBluefish.com. Savory Twin Grill Pork Chops. Getting hungry? Your table away to the Park City Grill, Fairfield County's elegant new dining spot in the beautifully renovated Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Comfortable, warm, and inviting. Park City Grill offers a world-class dining experience at reasonable prices. Come to the Park City Grill, 1070 Main Street in the Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Take I-95 exit 27A to exit 2. Plenty of free secure parking. The Gear Shop at the Ballpark at Harbor Yard is your one-stop shop for everything bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to beer the fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseball. The Gear Shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stump BB the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark at Harbor Yard and is open on game days. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. Can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at BridgeportBluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop. Perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Miller Lite wants you to win the greatest weekend that never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Miller Lite taste points for your chance to win one of 100 Vegas trips being given away this summer for the big weekend. So grab Miller Lite and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happened. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where prohibited. Switch takes because 5112 and 8112. For details on winner and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Oh, 
Bluefish Baseball is back on the air as Bridgeport and Southern Maryland are about to make their way to the field. The kids are making their way to the field to introduce the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs lineup. The Bluefish and Blue Crabs in Game 3 of this four-game series. The first two have lasted extra innings, and we will see what unfolds today. It has been some stellar pitching. Toby Stoner and Paul Segarra have combined for 14 innings of five-run baseball. Dan Reichert, the former member of the Fish, and also the starter from a couple of nights ago, Virgil Vasquez, have combined for 15 innings of two-run baseball. The starters have been tremendous. The hitters have not gotten on track which has allowed Southern Maryland to stay in the game. But in spite of four physical errors and two mental mistakes in game one of the series, and in game two, four double plays turned by the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs to Bridgeport's none, the Bluefish have claimed the first two games. And the two biggest reasons why Bridgeport has won the first two, you look at the way that the Bluefish bullpen has performed, especially the back end of the bullpen, it has been tremendous compared with the way that Southern Maryland has. Jim Warden has already been credited with the loss, and he's given up on the hill over his two games with the Blue Crabs against the Bluefish. Last night, Brian Doomsnail gave up the only run provided by the bullpen other than Jim Ed Warden. And remember, Charlie Manning was out of the bullpen. Richard Giannotti was the only other one to be involved, and he's not really a member of the bullpen. The Blue Crabs are short a few players, beginning with elbow chips from Travis Garcia. Even though he's not a pitcher, still has elbow chips. He'll be out about a month and a half. Meanwhile, the other player that's missing, Casey Benjamin, who is vital to their offense, he's now going to the Mexican League as he's been placed on the suspended list, dating back to a couple of days ago. The pitching, though, there are only 12 pitchers on the roster. There were only 12 pitchers on the roster until today when the Blue Crabs have added one more. It's Danis LaGuardia, who's a former Triple A pitcher from the Rochester Red Wings out of Havana, Cuba. He is 28 years old, and you wonder whether he'll be one of the players installed for the Blue Crabs in case there is trouble or in case this game does last a very long time. There have been a few decisions made by the Blue Crabs for their starting pitcher tomorrow. It was originally ruled as a TBA, but tomorrow it is Michael Schlack on the hill for the Blue Crabs, who was a member of the team last year. This squad has been pitching so well, and Schlack was a vital cog to the success last year for Southern Maryland. And Nick Green is the probably the final starter on this team. But this squad has done tremendously with the starting pitching. And the Bluefish have noticed they had an opportunity to talk with Eddie Rogers last night after the game. And he said it was almost as if Riker was on his game. He had six no-hit innings before it was broken up in the seventh. They were they felt that they worked the pitch count quite well against Riker well enough to where he got out of the game. And so the Bluefish wound up taking advantage of the Bullpen between Brian Doomsneal giving up a run in the eighth inning, courtesy of an RBI single by Eddie Rogers with a runner with runners at first and second. The single to the left center provided the first run of the ninth. The game was tied at one until the tenth, when with a runner at second base, after Brock Peterson was hit by a pitch and then moved to second on a wild pitch, Pedro Lopez singled to center to bring home. The tie-breaking run, and Eddie Rogers came up huge with a two-run drive to left field to make it four to one. Ultimately, the Bluefish won four to three, and Jesse English picked up the victory, even though he struggled two and zero on the this early season. He is one of three pitchers to have two victories for the Bluefish this season, and he has done a solid job. With the exception, believe it or not, last night he probably, that was probably his worst performance of the year. It was last night. Two runs in two-thirds of an inning. But Jonah Bayless picked up his teammate and was able to pick up his second save of the year with Warden going to one and three. 
on the year. Kennard Jones leads off for the Bluefish today behind Matt Pike. He's in left field, leading off. Colin DeLome is in center field. Bill back second. Prentice Redmond is in right field. Bill back third. Meanwhile, Luis Lopez bats in the cleanup role and is the third baseman. Ramon Vasquez is the designated hitter batting fifth. Rock Peterson, the first baseman, is batting sixth. Michael Morris gets an opportunity behind home plate. It appears as if he has been able to work out his shoulder issues from the offseason shoulder surgery, and he's batting seventh though, doing the catching. Pedro Lopez is the second baseman batting eighth. Meanwhile, Eddie Rogers rounds out the Bluefish rotation today as the Bluefish come in with a record of 9-3, and three, a game and a half ahead of Long Island, and three ahead of Somerset, four ahead of the Camden River Sharks, who is their next opponent coming up this weekend, Mother's Day weekend, from Campbell's Field. Meanwhile, for the road squad, it is Paco Figueroa. The shortstop is 3 for 10 in the series. He leads off Shinro Wu, who committed an error in each of the first couple of games, plays second base, the former big leader, bats second. David Espinosa bats third and plays first base to replace the departed first baseman, Casey Benjamin. Ryan Barton who was 0 for 5 yesterday against his former team with four strikeouts, is batting cleanup. There were a couple of suggestions made by some of the members of the front office of Southern Maryland suggesting why not go with Christian Lopez when he's batting 400. Well, Brian Martin is the cleanup hitter, and Pat Osborne is not going to replace the cleanup hitter right away. He's going to let Brian Martin run through. He's had success in this league. Mike Daniel is in right field batting fifth. Meanwhile, Christian Lopez is catching. He's batting sixth. Matt Padgett, the third baseman, batting seventh. Richard Giannotti, who came up with his first hit of the series last night. He's batting eighth and playing left field. And Jeremy Owens rounds out the Southern Maryland batting order. He's in center field. He's had a successful day yesterday. A couple of extra base hits, including a home run to left center field. Jeremy Owens bats ninth and plays center field behind Ben Moore. 1-1 one one on the season, and he's lasted no sh shorter than seven innings in his first two outings. Seven innings in his first outing in a victory, and then seven and two-thirds against Somerset, but lost the contest more. 1-1 one one with an ERA of 1.84, which just explains to everybody how anemic the offense really has been for the Blue Crabs. He's allowed... Four total runs and three earned runs to this point through 14 and two-thirds innings for more. Meanwhile, Matt Pike on the mound delivers six different pitches, but mostly uses a fastball slider and will utilize the changeup. As those three pitches, he will occasionally mix in a breaking pitch and variations of the fastball. He uses about 70% of his pitches as the fastball, and he is a strike thrower, 70%. Just about 70% of his pitches from last season were called strikes. When we come back on the Bluefish broadcast, we will have first pitch from Regency Furniture Stadium. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. Why do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the pegs of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold the commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, New York, New Jersey, and its affiliates. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Aid. At Miller Lite, we believe if you're not choosing a light beer with more taste, you need to man up. Not man down, because up is way better than down. You don't tell someone sad to cheer down. What's down, dog? A steamy pile and you just stepped in it. Your girlfriend's not wearing a push-down bra. It's called gravity, Isaac Nitwit. Can I be down front with you? All this down talk is bringing me down. So don't man down. 
Man up and choose a light beer with more taste. Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste great. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. A poem entitled Coors Light Summer. It's a Coors Light Summer. Hot bass all around. Backyard barbecues are where you'll be found. It gets pretty hot out. It'll be all right because we're going to be filled with ice and bone Coors Light. We step outside and we'll see it's in the floor. Your garden with a ball game, that's what's in store. It's going to be a scorcher, but there's no good sight. Refreshment awaits. Frost brew, Coors Light. Ain't Frost brew, Coors Light. Brew. For two years, Coors Brew Company was held up and we give them drinks about to go. Um, how's that wind blowing? Because, uh, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah uh, uh, there was one I got a hold of the right that, uh, the wind knocked down. That same night. BP fastball and he let her, he let it rip. You know, every bit of it, it didn't go anywhere. So, uh, yeah, he got a bit of a barrel on that ball. And it went for two five ball. But, uh, um, uh, it's, uh, it's we welcome you back to Bluefish Baseball. That was Toby Stoner before yesterday's game about run scoring. We'll direct our attention to the Star Spangled Banner right now. That's what I love about the game. It's you never know. What you're Bluefish baseball is on the air as Bridgeport takes on the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs in game three of this four game series. The right hander Ben Moore heads to the mound for the Blue Crabs. He has had solid outings in each of his first two starts. They are defined as quality starts six innings or more of three earned runs or fewer. And this right-hander last time out gave up two runs, two earned runs, in seven and two-thirds innings. The time before that, seven innings of one-run baseball. He is one and one this year. There is expected thunderstorms during the afternoon. There was rain this morning, but we are in the between period, between the rain and the sunshine and then more rain later on. Plenty of pop-up showers and storms in the area, but none of them right now are coming into Waldorf, Maryland. It will approach later on today. Let's see what the Bluefish approach with as their starting lineup presented to you by the Bridgeport Broadcast Network. Kennard Jones leads off and plays left field. Colin DeLomes in center field, batting second. Chris Redmond is batting third. Luis Lopez batting fourth and playing third base. Ramon Vasquez is the designated hitter batting fifth. Brock Peterson bats sixth and plays first. While Michael Morris does the catching and bats seventh. Pedro Lopez is the second baseman batting eighth. And rounding out the Bluefish lineup is Eddie Rogers behind Matt Pike. As Ben Moore is ready, the umpiring crew is ready, led by Eric Diaz today. Third base umpires, Pat McLaughlin, and Mike Terry is over at first base. We are underway. Bridgeport and Southern Maryland in game three. Temperatures in the 70s, but it appears as if Kadar Jones may be a bit chilly as he's wearing plenty of armor along with the undershirt to make sure that his arms are covered. It's a bit chilly out there. The first pitch is a fastball on the outside corner all in one. Plenty of strikes to be thrown today. Ben Moore and Matt Pike on the hill. The right-hander turns and delivers. Pitches serve foul to left field out of play. No balls and two strikes. That is what we have seen throughout this series. Strike one, strike two from each of the 
pitchers, whether it be Southern Maryland or Bridgeport, their start has been tremendous. The 0-2 sinks low, one ball and two strikes. Kennard in this series, 1-4-6 with a run scored and two strikeouts. He's in 356 in this young season. The 1-2. Frisbee slider outside. Two balls and two strikes. They'll feature a slider, a curveball, and a fastball reaching 90 miles per hour on the radar gun as Moore unleashes and the pitch is swung on and lifted foul to the left. Angled out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Plenty of fans here today for Kids Day as Bridgeport and Southern Maryland are hoping to provide the kids with some entertainment. The pitchers have been the ones that have been doing the talking the first two days. The 2-2 is inside on a heater, three balls and two strikes. Matt Padgett, the former Long Island Duck, is at third base. Paco Figueroa occupies short chin. Lung Wu is over at second base. And David Espinoza rounds out the infield rotation as the pitch is skied in the air to the right side of the outfield. Mike Daniel charging in. Chin Lung Wu moves back. And the second baseman makes the play as Wu records the first out of the frame. It's a P4 on the score sheet if you're keeping it home, and it springs Colin to the plate. Richard Giannotti's in left field, Jeremy Owens is in center, and Mike Daniels over in right field. Giannotti already has a loss in this series from game one of the set. He came out of the bullpen and gave up one earned run, two runs total. In that 13th, the one out toss to DeLome settles outside one ball and no strikes. DeLome currently leads the Bluefish in batting average at a 440 clip. He is crushing the ball. The next pitch is on the inside corner, one ball and one strike. A relatively quiet one for four in yesterday's contest with a single on his resume. He also grabbed out, flew out, and popped out. Next pitch is swung on and struck to shallow left field. Drifting forward, Richard Giannotti in the corner of that field spot who makes the play for out number two. Plenty of fans applauding the hometown Blue Crabs as several schools have made it around from the Tri-County area. Located just southeast of D.C. Plenty of fans making it out an opportunity to check out one of the introductory photographs of the season opening day at this ballpark against the Lancaster Barnstormers. Packed house there. Similar look today as the two out tosses outside. One ball and no strikes. Fans occupy most of the front seats. Front section of seats as the next pitch it is outside, two balls and no strikes. Prentice Redman is only looking to entertain at this point as he has one home run this year and has batted 270 this season. The 2 0 is way outside, three balls and no strikes. It does not seem as if Ben Moore is throwing all that hard to start off the game, but you know that he's throwing strikes based on the way that Jones and DeLoe. We're swinging the bats. The 3 is a frisbee right over the middle, 3-1. and one. He will throw three-quarter angle and then has been able to manipulate with his over-the-top as well. The 3-1 from Moore has swung on and missed. What appeared to be a change-up that sunk to the dirt. Three balls and two strikes. And you can hear the fans already getting involved. In the ball game, last couple of nights, not quite as much. The 3 2 swung and fouled to the netting. Count remains at full 3 and 2. If Redmond reaches, Luis Lopez would step up to the plate. He's in the on deck circle. Christian Lopez is the battery mate for Ben Moore today. Unlike last night when it was Mr. Mercado, Richard Mercado and Lopez have split catching duties. The 3 2. Swallow high, base hit, left field between the shortstop and third base hole. The corner outfielder Richard Giannotti delivers to the shortstop Paco Figueroa on the relay. It's a single for Redmond. And it sets up a runner at first base for Luis Lopez. Lopez has been hitting very well. He's at 289 on the year. Two overs and seven RBI. He's two for four in the series. And he came up with a big home run last night. Next pitch on its way. 
as the first pitch is sliding over the inside corner to count 0 and 1. We do apologize for that. Lopez, this series, does have two hits, but last night he did not come up with a hit. He was 0 for 4, so he's 2 for 8 for the series. The 0 1. Frisbee slider outside, one ball and one strike. So Prentice Redmond got on base. He is a threat to steal. Even though he's not run too much this year, the Bluefish, top of the order, has been potent in posing that threat. There's another throw to first. One ball, one strike, top of the first inning, no score. From Waldorf, Maryland, Bridgeport concludes the series tomorrow with their Liberty Division rivals as the two teams have not faced off since last year's postseason play-in game as a throw to first is not in time. The Bluefish have gotten caught stealing quite often this year, especially on pickoff moves. Not necessarily on throwdowns from opposing catchers. One ball and one strike. Moore settles down. Quick release. Outside corner strike. Lopez in disbelief. The count runs to a ball and two strikes. Bridgeport 7-1 against 2011 playoff teams. 3-0 against Long Island, 2-0 against, oh, against Southern Maryland, 2-1 against York. The only one that they have yet to play is Lancaster. And they will get plenty of opportunities this season to play against Butch Hobson's ball club. 1-2. Slap foul. Lopez took a big cut. Cat remains in the ball in two strikes. The difference between this first inning and the previous two, Ben Moore is throwing more pitches than he's accustomed to. And perhaps the Bluefish will see more reps and better looks at the pitcher as he deals a one too low to even the count. When the batters see more of the pitcher, Get a better idea where the curveball is going, where the slider is going, where every pitch lands. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Would appear to be a slider for Ben Moore. It's his first strikeout of the contest. The Bluefish get a base hit, but they strand a runner at the end of a half. No score from Waldorf. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeforeBluefish.com. It is Matthew Pike on the hill for the Bluefish in an early start for Bridgeport and Southern Maryland. The next three games for the Bluefish are in the morning. It starts today. The middle contest is tomorrow, 10.35 in the morning. The finale is part of a day-night doubleheader in Camden, New Jersey, between the Bluefish and the River Sharks. 
The morning game will feature plenty of kids. The night session should be a sellout at Campbell's Field with the fireworks display taking place on that Friday evening just beyond the left field wall, the Ben Franklin Bridge. Four games, three days, the Bluefish going to figure out who to start on Friday. Gilbert De La Vara and Raymar Diaz are two pitchers expected to go on Friday morning and, and night. The question is when each of those pitchers will take the mound. Matt Pike is on the hill for the Bluefish. He's has one win so far this season, and he delivers a first pitch ball low. One ball and no strikes to Paco Figueroa. Three hits in the series for the shortstop. He's also driven in a run as the third baseman, Luis Lopez, drifts in towards the lip of the infield grass. The next pitch diverted outside. Two balls and no strikes. Paco Figueroa, Chin Lung Hu, and David Espinosa, one, two, and three in the order an audibly noticeable crowd at the ballpark as the 2-0 lines up with the inside corner, 2-1. and one. Matt Pike ranges from 87 to 89 miles per hour. He will touch 90 on occasion, as he did in his last start in York, Pennsylvania. The 2-1 on its way from the right-hander, swung on and stroked into shallow left center field and falls in for a base hit. Colin DeLone drifts towards left center from center field and plays the ball in. It is a leadoff single for Mr. Figueroa to set up Chin Lung Hu. The outfield alignment is such. Kennard Jones is in left field. Colin DeLone is center field. And Prentice Redmond occupies right field. Luis Lopez at the hot corner one more time. Eddie Rogers over at short. Pedro Lopez is at second base. And Brock Peterson over at first. The battery made for Matt Pike today is Mike Morris. The first pitch is a fastball right down the middle on one. Morris making his first start behind the plate this season. He's had limited opportunities at the plate. But he's a very good offensive player. He can hit the ball with the best of him, and he's learning on the fly through the help of player coach Louis Rodriguez. The throw to first is not in time. Rodriguez, the player coach, Morris always asks what to do in certain circumstances and gets quite a bit of instruction from the player that's been playing professional baseball since 1991. That in Machete, the 01. Swung on and chopped on the ground slowly towards third. Lopez charges and has to eat it as he could not get the ball out of his glove. It was a rather difficult play, and we believe it will be ruled a base hit for the second baseman. Runners at first and second for David Espinosa, and already the Blue Crabs getting off to a flying start in the first inning. They have not scored a run in the first inning. They have not scored early at all in the contest. Neither team has. The earliest that any team has scored runs is in the fourth, and that was courtesy of a Luis Lopez two-run drive to left field in game one before Southern Maryland responded with two of their own, scoring four unanswered before Bridgeport had to make the comeback in the ninth inning. The first pitch from Pike is a fastball that sails on him. The count, one ball and no strikes. Espinoza showed bunt but pulled back on that offering as Lopez charged in. The count at one ball, no strikes. Pike staring in for the side. And the Blue Press fans making their voices heard. The 1-0. But attempt up the third base side, but trickles foul to the grass as Lopez snags it. One ball and one strike. They will be here for quite some time. The typical time period for the kids to be there is 10.35 to about 1 o'clock, maybe 1.05. The kids will then leave to try to get to the yellow buses, which they'll take to their homes. That's what happens in Bridgeport, Long Island, everywhere else in the Atlantic League. Runners at first and second. The 1-1 is a bunt attempt up the third base side. Pike Field and delivers the third, not in time. Fielder's choice, no play. Pike opted to go to third. Luis Lopez thought 
that the ball beat the slide of the base runner Figueroa, but it did not. And the bases are loaded for the Blue Crabs. So it's just a simple zero for zero for Espinoza on the fielder's choice. No play. Brian Barton steps up with the bases loaded. Barton, the designated hitter, struck out four times yesterday, is hoping to improve on his performance from that night. He was awful last night. Kept on swinging over the top of what appeared to be some cut fastballs from Jonah Bayless, righty-righty. And they, they were fastballs running inside the first pitch. Fastball in, one ball, no strikes, nowhere to put. Brian Barton, the bases are loaded in the first. Couple of singles in the early going. Paco Figueroa and Chin Lung Hu as Pike stares in for the side. The infield playing back, hoping for the double play. The 1-0 is right there on the inside edge. One ball and one strike. The last couple of days, Southern Maryland has had some huge scoring opportunities, but have not been able to put that big inning together last year. They had done that. The 1-1 one, one from Pike. Stands tall, feet parallel. He looks in, and the next offering is a slider outside, two balls and one strike. Pike began his outing by throwing two straight out of the zone of Paco Figueroa. He threw a strike, and then Figueroa stuck out his back and lifted a single to left center. Chin Lung Hu followed with a single of his own. David Espinosa is on first base. After he reached the pitch, it's a broken back run and through the left side for a base hit. One run scores. Kennard Jones comes up firing to the plate. It is an RBI single to left field by Barton. And the Bluefish trail for the first time in this game, one to nothing. Southern Maryland has led much of the series, but it's been Bridgeport's comeback ability that has been on full display in this series. Question is whether the Bluefish can minimize the damage as Barton must go for a new piece of lumber the next time out. But Willie Upshaw goes to the mound to try to calm down his right-handed pitcher. There is nobody warming up in the bullpen. He has full confidence in Pike after the number of wins he's picked up. Right-hander starting out the year 12 wins shy of Setting the record from Al Sontag, he's now 11 wins away from setting the mark after the victory in New York his last time out. The umpire, Eric Diaz, looking to break up the meeting. We mentioned about Mike Terry over at first and Patrick McLaughlin over at third base, the umpires, as Pedro Lopez Goes back to his position. Willie Upshaw made his point clear to Matt Pike. Brock Peterson and the shortstop Eddie Rogers make their way back to their respective positions along with Michael Morris. Remember this. This is the first time that Morris is commanding the pitching staff this year. It's a little bit different feel from the pitchers on the mound. Although these players are veterans. They know what to expect. And with nobody out, it brings up Mike Daniel, who can flat out fly. He already has a couple of stolen bases in the series as he tries to check his swing. Did he go? Yes, says the third base umpire, Mr. McLaughlin, 0-1. One run on three base hits in the bottom half of the first inning. Back-to-back -back singles, a fielder's choice, no play, and a single by Brian Barton to left field. The single drove in the run. 0-1 from Pike, pitch on its way, scooped up in the dirt by Morris, one ball and one strike. The outfield playing straight away, even Prentice Redmond playing a bit deeper for the left-handed hitter, Mike Daniel. The 1-1, fastball travels low, two balls and one strike. Matt Pike has had some issues down in this venue against this team. Right-handed pitchers tend to do well. And one of those pitchers that excelled at this ballpark, at least to a degree, was Toby Stoner. 
Here's a little bit of ABC baseball from Southern Maryland in game one as the fastball turns to the inside corner. Two balls and two strikes, which will, which forced Storer to give up some runs, but overall he gave his team a chance to win. And then the rest of the bullpen took care of business by inducing ground balls and lazy flies. Two balls and two strikes. Luff crabs up by a run. Pitch is swung on and lifted high in the air to left field. It's not too deep. Kennard Jones moving back. He makes the call and the catch as the throw comes into the shortstop. Eddie Rogers in line with third. It's a sacrifice fly for Mike Daniel as Jin Lung Wu comes to the plate. It's a 2 to nothing ball game in favor of the Blue Crabs. You saw how quickly the Bluefish have been able to recover from almost certain disaster this season. That's why they have the nine wins. They have six come from behind victories this season. And they will have to do it again in this contest as the Blue Crabs put up their second run with Christian Lopez stepping up to the plate. Lopez played in game one. The catcher and the 2010 Atlantic League All-Star moves forward. The one-out pitch from Pike. Slider dives outside, one ball and no strikes. Sometimes a pitcher will have to use his various pitches in order to get out of the jam. And sometimes that leaves him exposed for the second and third time through the order. Other times... Pike just need to get started, warmed up, eventually get ready to go. Pitch. Settles over the middle. One ball, one strike. And in an early game like this, the home team especially benefits. Because the pitchers, the pitchers are not as accustomed to traveling on the road. And they'll have to get used to the environment early. The pitchers may warm up later as the pitch is grounded to first. Brock Peterson snags on the backhand, flips the second one. Out to first, not in time. It is a three to six fielder's choice by Lopez as Peterson flipped it to Rogers who tried to rotate it back to Pike covering the bag. But the throw did not beat Lopez as he hustled down the line. Runners at the corners for Matt Padgett. He has not had a great run against the Bluefish each of the last couple of years. Although the Long Island lineup last season was, was stacked. And you wonder whether or not the Bluefish were able to not just get the fielder's choice, but eventually get out of this inning. They've already surrendered two runs as Pike deals outside one ball and no strikes. Could be a whole lot worse. The bases were loaded with nobody out. Brian Barton singled on the first run. And percentages say that if the bases are loaded with nobody out, you should give up at least two. A 1-0. Swung on and missed. One ball and one strike. And so far the Bluefish have allowed two. But the bases were loaded with Nobody out, and a run had come across. After that point, just one run had scored. As Brian Barton appears to be jogging down the left field line, do not know the reason for that as the pitch is chopped on the ground to short. Rodgers gobbles it up and scampers to the bag and touches for the final out of the inning. Six unassisted ends the frame, but not before Southern Maryland puts two on the board on three hits. Couple of runners left on. At the end of one, Southern Maryland with a two to nothing lead. Stay tuned, you're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. Screwdriver. Golf team from the golf trip that you never went golfing on. Grill fork, tuning fork, fork fork, drumsticks, a motel key. Let's not talk about the motel key. Needle nose pliers, a spark plug, a domino, a house key. There's lots of things you can use to open a new Miller Lite Punch Top can, but you'll always get the same thing. A smooth pour with less club. However you punch it, it's Miller time. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Baseball is different in a lot of ways where the history of the sport means so much. And, and, and it's something we should never, you know, never forget. And I think the Hall of Fame has a way of reminding us. Any time uh, that I've been it's just like, like a little kid. You people at the Hall of Fame have done a great job of preserving 
the history of the game. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Bluefish baseball is back on the air as the right-hander, Ben Moore. On the mound, he throws his final pitch as he gets ready for the top half of the second inning. Bridgeport trailing 2-0. Two, two runs on three base hits. One hit for Bridgeport in that first inning as Willie Upshaw makes his jog down the third baseline. Bus driver Dan Lassard over to the first base side with Ramon Vasquez stepping up to the plate. He's followed by Brock Peterson and Michael Morris. Five, six, and seven for the Bridgeport squad in, in that order. Bridgeport has taken the first two games. They've won seven of the last eight following a split of the River Shark series as the first pitch slides inside the count one ball and no strikes. Of course, that would include the, the finale, which Bridgeport lost against Camden, the 1-0. Fastball on the inside corner. The count one ball and one strike. Vasquez on the year at 304. Getting on base quite often for the fish as he lets one dive low. Two balls and one strike on what appeared to be a changeup. And you wonder as Moore works quickly. Pitch line right to first snag by Espinosa one away. And L3. By number three at first base. And it brings Brock Peterson to the dish. Bluefish are hitting the ball with with much more velocity today than they were against Dan Riker or Virgil Vasquez with the exception of Luis Lopez in that home run. But Ben Moore loves contact. He'll induce the ground balls. The pop flies as well. He has one strikeout today, the one-out pitch. Swung on and lifted deep left field. No chance. That ball is gone. So low drive. Brock Peterson. He jolted it to left field above the picnic area. The Bluefish are on the board. It's a two-to-one ball game. Brock Peterson pulled it down the left field line. He comes up with his... Second home run of the season, RBI number four for the first baseman. And perhaps he's getting back on track with Michael Morris making his way to the plate for the first time in this game. Morris has had limited at-bats this season. He's had to recover from shoulder surgery. He's had one or maybe two pinch hit appearances for the fish as the first pitch lines up with the outside corner 0-1. Bridgeport responds with a run of their own. Will they be able to come back with more? The old one appeared to be a slow changeup. No balls, two strikes inside the inch. Michael Morris, a native of Orange, Connecticut, about 15 minutes from the ballpark. The 0-2 fastball runs high, one ball and two strikes. He's reached his size double A baseball in his career with the Mets organization, double A. And he was a very good hitting catcher as he whiffs at a slider outside for strike three. Two strikeouts in the contest for Moore as he settles down after the solo drive from Brock Peterson. Pedro Lopez moves forward. You wonder if all the opportunities that Southern Maryland has let by may cost them in the long run. Last year it did not make an impact because... Their offense was that good. Travis Garcia was an impact player. Fastball right down the middle, 0 1. And you look at Casey Benjamin. He, too, was a tremendous force in the lineup. He's now no longer with the ball club. The 0 1. Fastball on the middle, 0 and 2. Nice little jutting action from the outside corner towards the middle. Almost looked like a Maddox fastball. The 0 2. Curveball, drifts outside, one ball and two strikes. The Maddox fast, the Greg Maddox fastball used to run from about six inches off the outside corner over the outside corner. A one-two, rounded slowly towards third, scooped up by Paget towards the line. He delivers across for the final out of the inning. Five to three, Paget to Espinosa, team up 
to end the frame. But the Bluefish get on the board with a solo drive from Brock Peterson at the end of an inning and a half. The score, 2-1, to one, Blue Crabs on top of the Bluefish. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. Are saving men from making the unmanly choice of drinking light beer with less taste. How? We rent these even online. Tease points and thousands of prices. So man up and tastepoints.com today. Your purchase is necessary for the legal beer is resident 21. Void in California, where we have two states, we get five more than the southern point of the contains not a winner of the free race. Go to tastepoints.com and the word company to walk in the steps. Great points to go. Bluefish baseball is back in the top half, or rather the bottom half of the second inning. The first pitch is on the outside corner, 0-1 to Richard Giannotti. It's the left fielder, followed by the center fielder, Jeremy Owens, and the shortstop, Paco Figueroa, 8-9-1 and one as Giannotti whiffs at an inside offering. No balls and two strikes. An overcast day from Regency Furniture Stadium, but plenty of fans have made their way out for this morning and afternoon event. The 0-2 from Pike. He winds and deals. Fastball turns inside. One ball and two strikes. Tomorrow, it's Isaac Hess against Michael Schlack. And the Bluefish are hoping for another stellar performance. They know they can get one from Isaac Hess. He's provided them in the past. The pitch is poked foul to the netting. One ball and two strikes. A very different setting from that of York, the ball is not carrying at all in this series, even though the Bluefish have extended their home run streak to seven consecutive games. The 1 2 swung on and lifted high in the air to shallow center. Galome sprinting forward, stops underneath, and corrals the baseball to the left of center for out number one. And F8 for Giannani brings up Jeremy Owens. One of the more unusual players in the Atlantic League. Very good person, a very, very nice individual, and, and is a great leader. But he's either home run or nothing, or, or a line drive to the gap or nothing. He does not hit too many singles. He steals plenty of bases. One of the best defensive players in the ALPB. The one out tosses inside. One ball and no strikes to Owens. And last night, he came up with a home run. Solo drive in the sixth to give his team a one nothing lead at the time. And he also stroked a double to drive in another run. The 1-0 drifts away, two balls and no strikes. That coming in the 10th inning. And the other two at-bats, strikeouts. It's what he does. It's either strikeout or, or big-time power. The 2-0 from Pike Swan and rope foul down the left field line. Two balls and one strike. Jeremy Owens' favorite offering is the one that's outer third towards the middle of the plate. He tends to send those rockets into left center field. He's got tremendous strength with the bat. He clobbered a home run yesterday in the left center field. No chance anyone 
to get the ball as Gathright stared at it. The 2-1 is popped high in the air. Right side, Pedro Lopez at second makes the catch. All you need to do is move in a couple of steps to record the out two away. Paco Figueroa steps forward. This ballpark will be a much better hitter's park as the season progresses. Simply because the wind so far has not been favoring right-handed batters. And for those that do not know what this ballpark is all about, left field is a bandbox or should be a bandbox for right-handed hitters. The fastball turns inside one ball and no strikes. 310 feet down the left field line compared with many of the ballparks. Not to mention it is shorter than Sovereign Bank Stadium and shorter than plenty of other parks. It's about 20 feet tall. The next offering tails to the outside corner. A ball and a strike. Then it goes to 345 towards left center field before just the 400 feet. Right center and right field, very few home runs hit there. The 1-1 one, one swung on and missed. A ball and two strikes. The hardest hit ball in this series to right field. And Toby Stoner believed that Casey Benjamin got all of it. It was by Benjamin. It sailed over the head of Prentice Redmond. On a normal day, he said on the air, it should have gone out. A 1-2, line drive, base hit, left center field as it drifts towards the alley, but it's cut off by DeLow before it can get any further than the two outfielders converging between Jones and DeLow. Two out single for Figueroa. Second straight base hit. He's now 5 for 12 in the series to set up Chin Lung Hu. First game of the series, not too much of a rally. Second game of the series, not too much of a rally either. This third game, maybe Pike is capturing too much of the plate this time. As Morris sets up outside the pitch, rotates inside, it's one ball and no strikes. Light fixtures have not been turned on. Although it is an overcast day, there are thunderstorms in the forecast for the afternoon hours. Although it is expected that Southern Maryland Bridgeport will get this game in. 60% chance this afternoon. And then for the finale, it's expected to be partly cloudy for much of the day with a morning shower for Thursday. One ball, no strikes. 2-1 Blue Crabs, runner at first base, Figueroa has decent speed. As he takes a modest lead off of first, Pike with a quick step pitches, granted sharply to short. Grady Rogers goes to one knee and delivers to Pedro Lopez, cutting towards second to record the fielder's choice and end the inning. One hit for the Blue Crabs, runner left on base at the end of two. Bridgeport, trail us 2-1. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish. Com. We'll be right back after these words from our local sponsors. So you stay tuned, my friends. Roach is seven fourteen. Savory twin grilled pork chops. Getting hungry? Your table awaits at the Park City Grill, Fairfield County's elegant new dining spot in the beautifully renovated Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Comfortable, and warm, and inviting. Park City Grill offers a world class dining experience at reasonable prices. Come to the Park City Grill, 1070 Main Street in the Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Take out 95 exit 27A to exit 2. Plenty of free secure parking. <laughs> The Gear Shop at the Blood Market Harbor Yard is your one-stop shop for everything bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to fear the fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseball. The Gear Shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stump, BB the Bluefish, and more. Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark at Harbor Yard and is open on game day. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. 
can't make a little more on game day, but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team, then check out the new Bluefish online store at bridgeportbluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop, perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Hi everyone out there, this is Matt Pike, and you are listening to Perry Miles on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Bluefish Baseball is back for the top of the third inning. Southern Maryland put up two runs in the first, but left a couple of runners on. Bridgeport has stranded just one to this point, and they got their run on a home run as the pitch is sky in the air, foul down the left field line out of play. It does not seem as if Ben Moore has the same kind of, not tenacity, force on the hill that Dan Reichert had. The command is different from Virgil Vasquez and this right-hander, and the uh, right-hander last night, Reichert, compared with what Moore's doing today as the pitch is stroke foul, no balls and two strikes. Eddie Rogers, Kennard Jones, Colin DeLome, 9-1-2. As the Bluefish are down by a run. We'll give you the trivia question coming up in the bottom half of the fourth. They didn't give you an opportunity to respond. You can send an email to perrym86 at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. The O2. Swung on and grounded to the right side. Who fields on a couple of hops. And the second baseman throws to first. And David Espinosa is on the bag. One away. Four to three. On the put out. Southern Maryland's defense has been... Almost rock solid the entire way. They have committed one of the fewest error totals in the league. They're one of the best defensive teams in the league as well. 985 fielding percentage and just seven errors on the docket for the Blue Crabs. The next pitch sways inside as Kennard Jones had to jut out of the way. Almost spun a 180. One ball, no strikes. Canard 0 for 1 today. The 1 0. Fastball. Got it outside. Two balls and no strikes. The important lesson that Canard always talks about is his communication with Joey Gathra and the lessons he learns from him as the pitch is stroked into center field, but Owens is right there to snag. Two away. Canard Jones has been taking a few lessons about base stealing, and he always wanted to know how he would be able to avoid getting caught stealing because he had so many of those early on. And some of it has to do with the confidence. Some of it has to do with the rhythm interpreted by the base runner on first. And Gathroy can sometimes lend a few pointers. The first pitch lines up with the inside corner to the loan. No balls in one strike. Two away in the top of the third. The loan is 0 for 1. Next offering, settles at the corner, at the knees. No balls and two strikes. A quick set of pitches so far for the right-hander. The 0-2. Curveball, strike three on the outside corner. DeLome, no chance. Third strike out of the game for more. Three solid innings for the right-hander. The Bluefish are down in order in the third. At the end... Off two and a half, the Bluefish trail two to one. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. Take your rest or follow up with your supervisor because Miller Time has nothing to do with the way and everything to do with me. Miller Light is brewed for the guys who are proud to call your brothers. We'll always talk you out of getting that phone and never talk you. During your backswing, you've got your brothers and a light beer that tastes like a beer should. It's not just a beer time, it's Miller Time. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Beer Company, Miller Beer Company. Miller Time. To rally and cry to the men around you, the ones that become your brothers. Call to beers and to listen. Order me for the final beer and ten. A night when your crew gets down to the task again. That may or may not involve running tables, running the same, firing up the grill, and getting the band back together. Just a few choice words spoken to the right person. Take the right beer to let the right man taste. Because it's not just a good time, it's a good time. We're here for Baseball and hot dogs and refreshment on ice. 
Bluefish Baseball on the Bridgeport Broadcast Network. The Bluefish Trail 2-1. to one. They're down. And Matt Pike goes to the hill. He threw a scoreless second inning, allowing just one hit in that frame. The first pitch to David Espinosa lines up inside. One ball and no strikes. It is Espinosa, Brian Barton, Mike Daniel. Three consecutive games in the morning. For the Bluefish, the 1-0, swung on and grounded to second, shifting to his right. Lopez, he bobbles momentarily, but is able to recover and throw to first, one away. 4-3 on the put out. Just a couple of shuffles to his right for Lopez as he drifted towards the second base bag. And it brings up Brian Barton. The next time that the Bluefish are at the ballpark at Harbor Yard will be against the Sugar Land Skeeters, the newest member of the Atlantic League. And that will be a weekend set against the team out of Houston, Texas. Three-game series highlighted by the post-Mother's Day celebration, Hanson Flowers, as the pitch is swung on and served to left center field pretty well hit. It leans towards the gap and one hops off the wall with Delhomme throwing it towards second base. And the ball is recovered by Pedro Lopez. It is a one-out double. The relay was angled towards third base, but Colin DeLone wanted to throw it to second to try to throw Brian Barton out at the bag, but nobody was covering. As a result, Brian is over at second base for Mike Daniel with one man out. That weekend will include the post-Mother's Day celebration, kids getting their autographs signed by the favorite players, the All-In Family Fun Day. And let's not forget about Wade's Derrick. The photo, the Bluefish photo that weekend, all of the favorite Bluefish players in that one single shot, excluding myself, of course. It was not in the team photo, but you can see Willie Upshaw there. You can see... Got like Matt Pike, who's on the hill today, in that photograph as Pike steps off. And after that, the Bluefish are at home for much of the rest of the next month. They really had their long road trip. And they will have quite a few home games as the one-out toss is served to shallow left field. Kennard Jones racing towards the line and makes the play a basket catch by Kennard as he turned his glove over. He is a left-handed thrower, so he used his right hand with the glove on it and used two hands to corral it and used his body as a shield to make sure he caught the ball. Heads up play for Kennard Jones. It's a P7 for Daniel to spring Christian Lopez to the plate. Sugarland. And then Southern Maryland before Bridgeport goes to Long Island for four. And then Bridgeport, their next road trip will actually take them back after Long Island to Southern Maryland and Long Island. A process of six games in seven days, it appears. As the first pitch is coming up. From the right-hander, Pike pitched swung on and lifted high in the air to deep left center field, but playable for Colin DeLogue, who rotates towards that direction to make the catch. It's an F8 on the score sheet as the Bluefish retire the side. A one-out double from Brian Barton does not matter because nobody crosses the plate at the end of three. Bridgeport, down by a run. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. The top of the fourth coming is coming up, Bluefish fans. Something you're actually looking for. When you flip through the real yellow pages for a plumber, you're actually looking to reclaim your home's value. Bluefish Baseball is the place to go for all your home and auto repair needs. Bluefish Baseball, the official home of the Bluefish Baseball team. 
Fawcett. It's not just getting directions to a tailor with YP.com. It's looking your best for an interview. It's more than finding a mechanic with YP.com at the moment. It's getting your road trip back on track. Whatever it might mean, there are more ways to search and there are more ways to find exactly what you're looking for. Advertising with the Bridgeport Bluefish is a sure way to hit a home run in your community. Since 1998, nearly 3 million fans have swum the turnstiles at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. Supporting their local team and Fairfield County's local businesses sponsoring the Bluefish is just the right thing to take your business in the direction you want. The proof is in the numbers. More than 70% of Bluefish partners renew their sponsorships annually. And the best part is, there are tons of ways to get involved. Billboards, in-game promotions, giveaways, fish vision video board ads, radio spots, and much more. If the economy is sinking your business, it's time to get swimming with the Bluefish. To join the Bluefish team now, call any of our front office sales representatives at 203-345-4800 for more information. Bridgeport Baseball is here for the fourth inning. Bridgeport has been held off from scoring the tying run by Ben Moore. Southern Maryland's pitching has been outstanding in this series. And so has Bridgeport's starting staff. So far, just two runs allowed by Pike, even though he suffered a little bit of trouble in the first inning. A solo drive by Brock Peterson, accounting for Ben Moore's only run allowed as he delivers another strike. No balls and one strike. Moore is not quite reaching as high on the radar gun as Dan Reichard might have yesterday. Or... The game one pitcher, Virgil Vasquez, Matt Vasquez, as the next one settles low. One ball and one strike. The third baseman, Matt Padgett, playing a little bit off the third base line against the right-handed batter as Redmond takes another call strike, a ball and two strikes. The Legends Club appears to be filling up quickly. Different business meetings. The one-two fastball is upstairs. Two balls and two strikes. Legends Club located down the left field line in this ballpark. Plenty of great views from up there. Glass windows to protect and can protect you from any weather. Two-two. Line drive. Base hit on one hop into left field past the lunge of Paget. The corner outfielder Richard Giannotti throws the ball to the shortstop. Pop Pro Figueroa on the relay. It's a leadoff single for Prentice Redmond. He is two for two. He really has not played that much of late. He's sat out two of the last three games, in part because Colin DeLome has been so successful at the plate. You wonder when Willie Upshaw would be sitting down the starting center fielder today or even giving Kennard Jones a breather. The... First pitch to Luis Lopez is bounced foul to the left. No balls in one strike. But Redmond has been the one that has not been finding as much playing time of late. Kennard Jones has been playing each of the last few games, and he has been one of the best bluefish hitters. Joey Gathright gets this game at least to start. He gets the game off as the throw to first. Not in time after the pitch lined up at the outside corner. And it's one ball, one strike. Lopez struck out in the first inning. He's in a little bit of a slide. He was 0 for 4 yesterday. And even though he came up with a few hits against York, he's just not swinging the same way. And Southern Maryland continues to induce... Big cuts from Lopez, but he missed on that one, one and two. It was a curveball away. A signature move from Ben Moore, a tantalizing pitch. Lopez was tempted. One ball, two strikes, slide step. Next one, swung on and chopped on the ground to third. Padgett Fields throws to second one, on to first. In time, double play. David Espinosa was able to keep his foot on the bag. 
Dan Lassard down the first baseline objecting. He thought that Espinosa might have been off the bag, but he's not going to win that argument with Mike Terry. It is a double play on the 5-4-3, to four to three, the second twin killing that Lopez has grounded into in this series in his many games. With two away, brings Ramon Vasquez. Vasquez was 0 for 1 with a line drive to first as he looks at a heater on the outside corner 0 and 1. Not going to see too much from Ben Moore today. He's taking a little off, adding a little to his fastball as the next pitch drifts outside. One ball and one strike. Bridgeport 9 and 3, Southern Maryland at 6 and 6 is more trying to move this game quickly and he fired it inside. Two balls, one strike. Moore does not take much time. It's basically 6 to 7 seconds. Get the ball and rip as the pitch is swung on and lifted high in the air to deep right. A playable just in front of the track, making the catch. Mike Daniel for the final out of the fourth. No runs, one base hit. No one left on because of the double play. At the end of three and a half, Bridgeport is trailing by a score of two to one. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. Why do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the pace of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together? Just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold the commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, New York, New Jersey, and Tithilians. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Inc. At Miller Lite, we believe if you're not choosing a light beer with more taste, you need to man up, not man down. Because up is way better than down. You don't tell someone sad to cheer down. What's down, dog? A steamy pile and you just stepped in it. Your girlfriend's not wearing a push-down bra. It's called gravity, Isaac Nitwit. Can I be down front with you? All this down talk is bringing me down. So don't man down. Man up and choose a light beer with more taste. Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. A poem entitled Coors Light Summer. It's a Coors Light Summer. Hot bands all around. Backyard barbecues are where you'll be found. It gets pretty hot out. It'll be all right because Coors are filled with ice cold Coors Light. You step outside and it skirts the floor. If you're guarding for the ball game, that's what's in store. It's going to be a scorcher, but there's hope in sight. Refreshment awaits. Frost Brewed Coors Light. Thank Frost Brewed Coors Light. The most refreshing game. Coors Brewing Company goes to Colorado. Bring you um, how's that one? Because, uh, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bluefish baseball is back. Harry Miles, out of the fourth inning, first pitch, settles low, one ball and no strikes to Matt Padgett. He's followed by Richard Giannotti and Jeremy Owens, seven, eight, and nine for the Blue Crabs. The bottom of the order has just been brutal in this series. The next pitch is served out into left field, not deep. And our Jones tracks it down and makes the catch in the corner outfield spot. One away for the Blue Crabs. It is the bottom of the fourth. Let's take a look at the trivia question. When was the first time that Matt Pike Pitched against Southern Maryland. When was the last? When was the first time that Matt Pike pitched against Southern Maryland? And how was his performance with runs and hits and all of those good numbers? Pike takes the ground ball on the mound and he throws to first in time on the bouncer two away. You can send me an email, perrym86 at gmail.com. Perrym86 at gmail.com. Matt Pike's first 
appearance against Southern Maryland. An F7 and a 1-3 springs Jeremy Owens to the dish. He's 0 for 1. The bottom of the order, if you take it, let's say, from 6 to 9, 0 for 7 today, which is part of the reason why Southern Maryland was unable to extend their lead. The top of the order has done well, especially Paco Figueroa and Brian Barton. The first pitch lands over the middle on 1. You can also follow me on Twitter, just me, P M I L E S. Just me, P M I L E S. And send any comments, questions, or concerns you might have about the broadcast to my email address. Owen swings and misses. Owen, too. Hike through a changeup, broke to the dirt. And Owens was expecting it to be about knee high. Great changeups. Often tempt hitters to commit before they're, they think they're ready. The 0-2. Owens was able to keep his swing back on the challenge to first base umpire Mike Terry. It is a no swing. One ball, two strikes. For any challenge for right-handed batters, that would be Mike Terry's responsibility over at first base. For a left-handed hitter, the third base umpire would be the person to call it on as the pitch is grounded on three hops to short. Rogers flicks it over to first to retire the side. A 6-3 to three put out. For Rogers, another one, two, three. But this time for the Bluefish, as it's happened often with Southern Maryland in this series. It's two to one. Bridgeport still down by a run. Heading to the top of the fifth. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. The gear shop at the ballpark and lumber yard is your one stop shop for everything Bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your Bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home road and other trendy hats, to fear the fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseball. The Gear Shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stuffed BB the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark in Harbor Yard and is open on game day. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. Can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at BridgeportBluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop. Perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Miller Lite wants you to win the greatest weekend that's never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Miller Lite taste points for your chance to win one of a hundred Vegas trips being given away this summer for the big weekend. So grab Miller Lite and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happens. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Help the legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where prohibited. Switch takes because 5112 and ends 812. For details on winner and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Brock Peterson moves forward for the fish to open up the top of the fifth inning. He's followed by Michael Morris and Pedro Lopez. 6, 7, and 8 as the first pitch is swung and drilled into deep left center field. Going back is Giannotti. He cannot play it. He has to take it off the wall. Peterson going for two. He slides in shoulder first as he is safe with his second extra base hit of the ball game. That came within maybe a foot or two of going out of the park in height and maybe a foot or two to the right. That's definitely gone. It was higher than the left center field wall, eight feet high, but it was not as as tall as the 20-foot wall just above that, just to the left. It winds up being a leadoff double for Brock Peterson, and you wonder if Michael Morris will try to perhaps bunt in the fifth inning. Because Southern Maryland's pitching has been that effective. The corner infielders are in. They allow Morris to swing away. And he takes it outside. One ball and no strikes. Yes, it is the fifth inning and it is early. But you get very few scoring opportunities against the starting staff. The next offering is a fastball. It's delivered high. Two balls and no strikes. If Morris reaches, it would set up Pedro Lopez. 
Morris last season was a good bat off the bench. The 2-0 is whiffed 2-1. Fastball gone right by Morris. And 130 at bats hit at a 3.08 clip with three homers and 13 RBI. Not bad for a catcher. He was selected in round 20 in 2008 by the Mets. 2-1. Sinker. Swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes. The other possibility is if Morris is able to perhaps to stroke the ball to the opposite field on the ground. Lots of your ground ball since Peterson over to third as that might have been what Morris was trying to do. He was way out in front. But it seems as if his bat was turned to try to angle the ball towards the right side. Two balls, two strikes. At this point, Bridgeport has struggled to hit the ball with the exception of Prentice Redmond and Brock Peterson. They're spread out in the order. 2-2. Two, two. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did, says the third base umpire, or first base umpire for strike three. Morris cannot believe it. It did not look like he committed, but that's not what was going on with Mike Terry. So Morris strikes out for the second time on what appeared to be a slider. Pedro Lopez steps up. He's had a big series. Not necessarily hitting for a high average, but he had a sacrifice fly in the ninth inning to tie the game for the Fish in game one. He had an RBI single in yesterday's contest to break the tie in the tenth before Eddie Rogers came up with his home run as he let the first pitch travel outside, one ball and no strikes. It's about the timeliness of his hitting. At 2.41 this year, the next pitch surfaces away and may have been a tad low, two balls and no strikes. It's the second consecutive hitter that Moore has fallen behind in the count. It's almost as if he's living on the outside corner against right-handed hitter. The 2-0 swung on and foul tipped into the glove. 2-1. Uh, great crowd today. A plethora of kids enjoying themselves on a field trip from the Tri-County area in Maryland. The 2-1 swung on and stroked into medium-range center field. Jeremy Owens has a beat on and makes the catch as the runner at second base, Brock Pearson, lost the throw, went right to Paco Figueroa, lined up with third base. It's an F8 for Lopez. As the shortstop, Eddie Rogers moves forward and... He's been having a great year. Eddie Rogers this season has two homers and 11 RBI. He's batting 378. And the Bluefish have done a tremendous job placing him down the order in these critical situations. Yesterday, two-run shot and an RBI to tie the game at one. When it looked as if the Bluefish were not going to score, they eventually got a run on Brian Doomsnail. As the two out toss to Rogers, it was outside. One ball and no strikes. Rogers has played all different positions in his career. Second, short, third. Loves the shortstop position. Loves the ability to lead. As the 1-0 slides over the middle. One ball, one strike. The shortstop has the authority over everybody on the infield on defense except for the catcher. And the pitcher is the one that mostly controls where the baseball goes. C catcher doesn't throw the ball. The 1-1 one -one is on the outside corner ball and two strikes. Bluefish have a runner in scoring position since there was nobody out. Brock Peterson let off with a double, a screaming double off the wall in left center field. But... It may not lead to anything. So the Maryland's pitching is buckled down as a 1-2 is reached for swung on and missed strike three. And the out is recorded as Christian Lopez fires to first to retire the side. Two strikeouts in the frame. Overall, five on the day. 
At the end of four and a half, the Bluefish are still down by a run. It is two to one. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball. Richportbluefish.com. We'll be right back after this. The gear shop at the ballpark at Harbor Yard is your one-stop shop for everything Bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your Bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to beer the fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseball. The gear shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stuff, maybe the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark in Harbor Yard and is open on game days. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. Can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at bridgeportbluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop, perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark in Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Wheeler Light wants you to win the greatest weekend that never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Wheeler Light taste points for your chance to win one of a hundred Vegas trips being given away this summer for the big weekend. So grab Miller Light and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happens. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where private is. Swing states begins 5 one and ends 8 one For details on weather and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Time. Don't check your wrist or follow up with your supervisor. Because Miller Time has nothing to do with when and everything to do with who. What's up, Tommy? Miller Light is brewed for the guys you're proud to call your brothers. We'll always talk you out of getting that phone call. And never talk. Southern Maryland is up in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Matt Pike, he's been able to settle down since the first. And I'll have to face Paco Figueroa, Chin Lung Hu, and David Espinosa. One, two, and three in the order as Luis Lopez creeps in from third. The first pitch lands on the inside corner on one. 11.48 Eastern Standard Time at 10.35. First pitch from Regency Furniture Stadium. Pike unleashes and the pitch... Drops low, what appear to be a change. One ball and one strike. The outfielder's playing straight away. And even with the right-handed hitter in Paco Figueroa, Perez Redmond still playing somewhat deep, considering the ball really does not travel there. The pitch is stroked into left center field. It drops in for a base hit, cut off by Colin DeLome towards the alley to hold Paco to a single. But he's three for three on the day, and it brings up Chin Lung Hu. Hu has singled and scored a run. He also brought it into a fielder's choice in the second inning to end that frame. And there was a set of five consecutive hitters, which Matt Pike had retired before that point. As Hu makes his way to the dish. Runner on first base, Figueroa, displays very good speed, which is why Pike threw to first to make sure to check. Southern Maryland starting pitching has not been the issue. Jim Ed Warden's been a problem, and Southern Maryland's offense has been anemic. Pitching, number one in ERA at 3.05. For the year as Pike delivers and the pitch is a check swing foul out of play 0 and 1. And then offensively, Southern Maryland in 233 have picked up just 53 runs in the first 12 games. Now, granted, it's not lower than York's total, and it's not lower than Lancaster's total, who has the highest batting average in the league. Lancaster, after they excelled last year. They were the top run scoring team in the league. Stepping out of the box, who? The count. 
And no balls and one strike. The next throw to first by Pike lands in the glove of Peterson, but Figueroa gets back. Figueroa has yet to steal a base in this series, although Southern Maryland did swipe five in game one and one more yesterday as the 0-1 is fouled straight back to the screen, no balls and two strikes. Michael Morris has been working his way back from that shoulder surgery, and he was throwing some darts to Gilbert Delavar at second base a couple of days ago to warm up his arm. Well, the Upshaw wanted to provide Morris with the opportunity to guide one of the pitchers in this series and perhaps another in the upcoming series, considering that there is a double dip on Friday. Three catchers on the roster for the Fish uh, in the 27. Man's pitch is right back to Pike. He snags it and throws the first double play. No chance for Paco Figueroa. He's on the move. He's going on contact. Just a bad place at a bad time. Wrong place, wrong time. And who lines into the double play? It's a 1-3 to three deep P on, on the line drive. It eliminates Paco Figueroa to establish David Espinosa. Even if Figueroa had not been on the move, he probably still would have been thrown at it first because you still, as a base runner, are going to cheat towards second once contact is made. You can always drift back, especially if it's going to go through the middle or if the middle infielders have a chance to get the ball. The first pitch is outside, one ball, no strikes. If Pike does not snag the ball, that's going through the middle, but an outstanding defensive play by Pike to field his position. He's one out away from escaping any trouble in the fifth as he runs a fastball up and away. Two balls, no strikes. Conversation between Morris Morris and Matt Pike have concluded their conversation as they convened at the mound getting ready for Espinosa a lefty there is nobody warming up in the bullpen Pike threw four innings of one run baseball but suffered the loss in his initial outing that was against the Camden River Sharks, the 2-0, settles low. Three balls, no strikes. Five innings against York. Perhaps it'll go six today or even seven, depending on the flow of the game. Southern Maryland's just not look the same as it is ball four low. A uh, fastball to Espinosa. He moves to first base. Set up Brian Barton, who already has a single and a double. As... Willie Upshaw makes his way to the hill. And there is one Bridgeport player stretching out the long band to make sure that he's ready to go if called upon. I believe it is a left-handed pitcher because he's stretching out his left shoulder with the long arm band attached to one of the railings that prevents fans from going onto the field. Upshaw has his talk with Pike. Everything is through, except Morris has stayed on the mound with Pike to make sure that the signals are not crossed up. Two men out. 4-4-11 in the set for Barton. The batting average numbers look much better statistically than they would if you were to look, take them case by case. Because Barton had a few opportunities yesterday to drive in runs. He did not do it. And he's not driving in runs in this series in general. He didn't do anything in game one either. The two-out toss, fastball on the inside corner on one. So when Bridgeport pitching needs to tighten up its grip on the game, they do it. And Barton, yes, he did have a, a single. It was a bloop down the right field line. And then a, a single in the sixth inning with a run score. He stole a base, but... Not driving in the runs, and that's the objective of the cleanup hitter as the pitch is grounded to the left side. No balls, two strikes. 
That's what the blue fish have. Luis Lopez driving in runs. Prentice Redmond driving in runs. Ramon Vasquez driving in runs. And Lopez, one of the leaders on this team. Martin not quite getting the the hang of the pitching just yet. And the one year he really excelled in the Atlantic League was with Newark, which is a bandbox for hitters and pitchers alike. The pitch is grounded to short. Rogers flips it to second the short way, where Pedro Lopez steps on the bag to end the inning. Fielder's choice on the 6-4 to four to end the frame. Pike gives up one hit and one walk. One runner is left on. At the end of five, Bridgeport in another pitching doozy. But they are down two to one at the end of five. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball at BridgeportBluefish.com. The gear shop at the ballpark at Harbor Yard is your one-stop shop for everything Bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your Bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to beer the fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseball. The gear shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stuffed BB the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark in Harbor Yard and is open on game days. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. Can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at BridgeportBluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop, perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Wheeler Light wants you to win the greatest weekend that never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Wheeler Light taste points for your chance to win one of 100 Vegas trips being given away this summer for a big weekend. So grab Miller Light and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happened. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where prohibited. Sweepstakes begins 5112 and ends 12 For details on the winner and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller time. Don't check your rest. The Bluefish have not scored since the top half of the second inning, courtesy of a Brock Peterson home run. The Blue Crabs have not put any runs across since the first inning. As Ben Moore is on the hill for his sixth inning of work, it's 2-1. to one. The score, the first pitch is slapped into left center field. Pretty well hit. Jeremy Owens on the move. He won't get there. Bangs off the wall. Kennard Jones aiming for a second. And he's in there standing up and then nearly went off the bag as the second baseman, Ching Lung Hu, tried to swipe tag. But Kennard Jones was back on the bag in time. It is a leadoff double for Jones to left center field. It's the third time around in the order for the Fish. You wonder if they will hit a little better against Southern Maryland this time around the order. Colin DeLone moves forward. Sometimes it takes a couple of chances at a pitcher before the hitters are able to adjust the next one. Swan and lifted foul by DeLone, 0-1. Three hitting streaks ended yesterday for the Bluefish. Three relatively long ones. Joey Gathright had an 0-4. Luis Lopez had an 0-4. And Ramon Vasquez. And Colin DeLong right now is 0-2. for And he's probably going to be 0-3. for It's a shallow fly ball behind the shortstop. It's in the triangle and falls in. Wow. There was miscommunication between Jeremy Owens... The center fielder, Paco Figueroa, the shortstop, and Richard Giannotti converging on each other. And an opportunity to talk with Willie Upshaw before the season about the imaginary triangle. And the best way to, to fight off a potential collision is to communicate. Well, the shortstop, Figueroa, continued to go back while Giannotti came in from left field towards left center. Giannotti came forward. Giannotti and the shortstop, Figueroa, or rather... Owens and the shortstop figure all nearly collided. It falls in and is probably going to be called a base hit. I believe it's already been called a base hit. As the bunt attempt to serve up the third base side, there's one play to first. It is made by Ben Moore, the pitcher. Sacrifice is successful 
one to three to set up runners at second and third. A double by Kennard Jones, a single to center field on a bloop for DeLow, and he moves to second. The runners move up 90 feet after Prentice Redmond laid down the bunt. You wonder whether Southern Maryland is going to play deep or if they are going to play at the left of the infield grass. Towards the middle of the infield, they're playing back. Perhaps that's an indication they'll go after Ramon Vasquez to try to turn two by pitching around Luis Lopez. The one-out toss, a fastball high, one ball and no strikes. Lopez understands this. Both Lopez's do. Christian behind home plate and Luis, who's in the batter's box. 1-0 on its way from the right-hander. More stairs in. Next one, swung on and served foul. Down the right field line, a ball and a strike. Kennard Jones at third base. A long fly ball will tie the game. Colin DeLome is at second base as a result of the sacrifice bunt. One to three. And Luis Lopez is 0 for 2, moves forward. Next pitch, swung on and foul tipped. Lopez a bit shaken up after it appeared he took one maybe to the shoulder or even to the neck. Boy, that's got to hurt. Ben Moore checking out his battery mate as he continues to talk with Chris Lopez. That not only stings, that has to hurt. Have to have lots of guts. And at the same time, have the mindset that you're going to catch deflected baseballs from former big leaguers and former AAA guys. They, these guys can hit. One ball, two strikes, one man out. Top half of the sixth. Next offering. Fastball up, two balls, two strikes. So the intent was not to pitch around Lopez. The idea is... If Lopez grounded to the corners, the defensive players would go home. If it was grounded toward the middle, they would allow the run to go home as DeLome stands off of second base. Nearly breaking to the plate, Kennard Jones. The pitch is grounded toward Show Jones coming to the plate. The throw to first is low and could not be scooped up by David Espinosa. A bad throw as DeLome had to stay at second base. It is going to be an RBI, but it also will probably, it is definitely going to be an E6 on the play. So Luis Lopez comes up with the RBI E6, and it appears that Patrick Osborne is coming to the mound to convene with the rest of his players. There is action room in the Southern Maryland bullpen. Boy, has that bullpen been exhausted in this series. A 13-inning game followed by a 10-inning affair. And they just put one more player on the roster for today, Damius LaGuardia, 5'11", 200 pounds out of Havana, Cuba, who's played AAA baseball in his career. But other than that, it's really come down to the starting pitchers and the bullpen getting overworked, especially this early in the season by Mr. Osborne. They only have 22 players, I believe it's 20, maybe 23 players now on the roster. Yesterday it was 22. The one out toss is inside to Ramon Vasquez. The count at one ball and no strikes. It should be tied at two with a runner at second, but because Luis Lopez reached on the error, he's at first base, runners at first and second. Vasquez stands in, open stance before Moore steps off the rubber. One hit gives the Bluefish the first lead of the day. Can they pull off comeback number seven this season? Comeback win number seven. The 1-0 swung on and set high in the air to center. Not too deep. Owens drifted back for a moment and then charges forward to make the play for out number two. Ramon Vasquez. It is 0-4-3 in the contest and has gone through a little bit of a slump. He's hit a couple of hard ground balls, but today he's 0-3. Last night he was 0-4. He is 0 for his last nine, but he does have an RBI from a couple of nights ago. 
as Patrick Osborne comes out. And that is all that we will see from Ben Moore. That's the second time he has visited the mound. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuity. Prudential Annuity is going to bat for our community. When we come back, it is Brock Peterson stepping up to the plate here on BridgeportBluefish.com. Bluefish Baseball is here. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. It is Danis LaGuardia, the player who was put on the roster today as he was signed. And he is officially in the contest because there is no number 27 out there other than the right-hander, 5 feet 11 inches tall, out of Havana, Cuba. He's 28 years old as the right-hander will have to take on Brock Peterson. There is nobody else warming up in the bullpen for Southern Maryland. This could wind up being one of those extra inning doozies again. Two straight for the fish, three consecutive for Southern Maryland. Go figure. The two-out pitch on its way, but first, Mr. LaGuardia steps off the rubber. Plenty of experience in affiliated baseball. Last was with the Rochester Red Wings of the Minnesota Twins organization. A two-out pitch served inside the corner 0-1. Saw a fastball and a breaking pitch from the right-hander during warm-ups. You wonder if he will feature any other pitches besides those two. Perhaps a slider is in his repertoire as well. The 0-1 as LaGuardia stares at second. He deals, grounded softly to short, charging forward and to his right, Paco Figueroa, as he delivers to second base in time to retire the side. But the Bluefish, they tie the game, courtesy of a Luis Lopez ground ball to short that was booted by the shortstop, Paco Figueroa, but the run would have scored anyhow as Brock Peterson ends the inning. One run, two base hits. A couple of runners left on. End of five and a half. The game is tied at two. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball at BridgeportBluefish.com. We'll be right back. Shut 
Shark Tooth, Screwdriver, Skeleton Key, Golf Team from the Golf Trip that you never went golfing on, Drill Fork, Tuning Fork, Fork Fork, The Lucky Fishing Lure you snagged Alan with, Sorry Alan, Drumsticks, Chopsticks from the place you met that Dallas based flight attendant, A Motel Key, Let's Not Talk About the Motel Key, A Spark Plug, Domino, A House Key. How do these things make Miller Lite from a can even better? Find out May 2012. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Matt Pike continues to throw on the mound for the Bluefish, entering his sixth inning of work. Ben Moore, last five and two-thirds innings, allows two runs. I believe both of them are earned. And his day came to a close with six base hits. The Bluefish worked no walks today because he was throwing consistent strikes. The pitcher cannot win it. He cannot lose it. The pitcher of record at this point is Danius LaGuardia. Brock Peterson very familiar with LaGuardia because they were teammates in Rochester. The first pitch is a fastball landing outside. One ball, no strikes. Mike Daniel, Christian Lopez, Matt Padgett. The trivia question is upcoming as the next offering is inside. Two balls, no strikes. I will give you the re answer in the top half of the seventh inning. Matt Pike's first appearance against Southern Maryland, what day was it? And what was his performance like? The 2-0 from Pike settles on the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Matt Pike first joined... The Bridgeport Ball Club out of the bullpen back in 2008 as the pitch is served out to deep left center field, but it's playable for Colin DeLong, who corrals. One away. Mike Daniel served a long way, but the ball is not carrying a whole lot. It is cool air out in the ballpark, a little humid out there, but it's staying in the yard today, and it has stayed in the yard throughout the series for the most part. It's an F8 if you're counting at home. It's Christian Lopez steps forward. Lopez is 0 for 2. Fielder's choice ground ball 3 to 6 in the first. And a fly ball to center field in the third. Matt Pike continues to deliver and he fires a first pitch ball outside the wall. The hint is that he pitched with Bridgeport back in 2008. So his first appearance... Could have easily have been out of the bullpen. Could have been a st as a starter. Pitch is lifted high in the air right. It's a center field, rather. It's to the right of center. Colin DeLone makes the play again. He didn't have to move too much. He was perfectly positioned because of the way that Willie Upshaw instructs his team to field. And also because of their intelligence on the field. Lots of times they face the hitters. And because of... That extra knowledge in advance, they know exactly what the tendencies of the hitters are. Matt Padgett moves forward. He's 0 for 2 today. A couple of outs on his resume. First pitch, swinging, miss. He's 1 for 10 in the set. On 1. 6 4, ground ball, or 6 on assist, rather, on the fielder's choice in the first and the threat. And then at F7, as he strokes the ball, a deep left field, Kennard Jones turns around. He looks up, and that ball is off the wall. It was only a few feet away from going over the wall. Kennard Jones turned his back. He could not get there and then tried to play the ricochet. But Matt Padgett winds up with a double. He's one for three today. It sends the go-ahead run in scoring position for Richard Giannotti. The first hit from any of the bottom five hitters in the lineup today 
One for 12 combined between Mike Daniel and Jeremy Owens. And when you have so many hitters missing out on the offensive party or contributing offensively, you're going to have a problem beating teams that have great pitching as the next one is stroke high in the air to shallow left field. Kennard Jones points in the sky and makes the catch in left for the final out. Three fly ball outs induced by Matt Pike, a relatively quick inning, a hit sandwiched between the, the last two outs of the frame. At the end of six, Bridgeport and Southern Maryland are not at a two. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. And you listen to Perry Miles on the Bluefish Broadcast. At Miller Lite, we believe if you're not choosing a light beer with more taste, you need to man up, not man down. Because up is way better than down. You don't tell someone sad that you're down. What's down, dog? A steamy pile and you just stepped in it. Your girlfriend's not wearing a push-down bra. It's called gravity, Isaac Nitwit. Can I be down front with you? All this down talk is bringing me down. So don't man down. Man up and choose a light beer with more taste. Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Danius LaGuardia, who entered the game for the Blue Crabs out of the bullpen and retired Brock Peterson to end the sixth, will have a chance in the seventh inning to continue his work on the mound. And you would think that with as many teams that have been able to push Southern Maryland to extra innings that he may be going for quite some time. 2-2 two, two the score in the seventh. And we will get to the trivia question answer as the first pitch is swung on and line base hit towards right center field. Michael Morris with his first hit of the season as he comes up with a rip on a hard ground ball to the left of the second baseman, Chin Long Hu, towards the second base bag. With a runner on, Pedro Lopez moves forward. Last batter due up in the inning is Eddie Rogers. Bridgeport with a victory today. Would have won eight out of nine, including three straight. As the next pitch, bunch shown, but pulled back on high heat. One ball and no strikes. The trivia question for today. Matt Pike's first appearance against Southern Maryland. When was it and what was his line? There were a couple of responses. None of them were correct. And so we will reveal the answer right after Lopez's at bat as his butt went through the zone as he charged towards first base. One ball and one strike. Well, Matt Pike has been strong today. Six innings, two-run baseball, both runs coming in that first inning. He has settled down. 1-1 one, one on its way from the right-hander LaGuardia. But Schoen pulled back, twirls outside, two balls, one strike. And we definitely know what the answer to that trivia question is. as he did not have too many opportunities to hit at the plate anywhere. More pitcher than anything else, even though he did play outfield in high school and college, as the next one is a fastball inside. Three balls, one strike. Matt Pike, a former outfielder, 
in his collegiate days at White Lake, Michigan. Three balls and one strike. Next offering. Bunt attempt off the first base side and trickles foul. Three balls, two strikes. That may have actually been a blessing in disguise. Even though Willie Upshaw would like to have the bunt executed, when you're up 3-1 the count, it is a hitter's count. Maybe you let one go and set up brothers at first and second, so that way Eddie Rogers can set up the bunt. National League style for a runner at first space. Nobody out for that person to bunt. To move him over to second base with one man out. It's almost an automatic when it comes down to others as the pitch is chopped to the right side. And that does the job almost as effectively as a bunt did as the throw to first is in plenty of time. It's a one to three put out. It does not count as a sacrifice, but Michael Morris moves over to second base anyhow. So the Bluefish get the job done indirectly. And it springs Eddie Rogers for a chance to give the Bluefish the lead, and he's been big. In this series, he had a home run, a two-run shot yesterday, an RBI single, which played important roles in, in taking the lead for the Bluefish, or extending the lead for the Bluefish, and also tying the game. Different points, the curveball drops over the middle 0-1. The first appearance by Matt Pike against Southern Maryland came on May 14, 2008. He threw one shutout inning, finished the game with a strikeout. The 0-1, swung on and missed, 0-2. And as if that was not enough, he did almost the same thing without the strikeout the next day against Southern Maryland in an inning of relief. Eventually, he was placed as a starter. He had a string of successive starts. Ten consecutive starts in 08 before he was placed in the bullpen. His ERA ballooned all the way to 6.14. Curveball inside. One ball, two strikes. That was under Tommy John in 2009. Halfway through, he was a reliever. He did an outstanding job. I was converted to the starting rotation because Willie Upshaw admitted that year the team was a, a bit desperate to find starting pitching. They had Dan Riker, they have Julio, uh, Esteban Young, but really nobody else. They tried Matt Pike out, and he did well as the next offering is outside. Two balls, two strikes. 2010, he entered as the number three or four overall pitcher, even though he did start opening day. And then this year, or last year rather, he... He did a solid job as the next pitch is poked foul to the right side. Scampering after Christian Lopez, but he runs out of room. It falls about a row or two into the seats just above the netting. Two and two. A long journey for Matt Pike. A long journey for the Bluefish throughout the season. And Eddie Rogers, three times in the big leagues. With the Baltimore Orioles separate seasons, just could not quite... Keeping himself there on a consistent basis. Played affiliated baseball all over the Western Hemisphere. The 2 2. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Eddie Rogers, fan for the second time. And you can hear the fans getting a little bit enthusiastic about the way that Southern Maryland has been able to pitch the ball. But now it's time for a call to the bullpen, it looks like, as Patrick Osborne goes to the hill, perhaps discussing matters first with his relief pitcher, LaGuardia, and he immediately points to the bullpen, asking how everything is. LaGuardia with a successful outing to this point, but the runner at second base is his responsibility. This call to the bullpen, presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. When we come back, we will tell you whether it's Ricky Barrett, Brian Doomsnail, or Charlie Manning. It will depend on the number that we see on the back of the jersey. We'll find out right after this on BridgeportBluefish.com. Why do we love baseball? 
Is it the uniforms? The pace of the game? The mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold the commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, New York, New Jersey, and its affiliates. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Aid. This call to the bullpen, presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for our community. It is Charlie Manning on the hill for the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs. The other day, game one of the series, two scoreless innings for the left-hander. But his situation is more pressing right now because he must start his outing with a runner in scoring position in Michael Morris as Kennard Jones is up at the plate. Jones has a double to left center field in his first at bat, a lefty lefty matchup. Jones will have to figure this out. The first pitch, fastball dives over the middle on one. And there's more bullpen action for Southern Maryland. The bullpen catcher Perhaps Richard Mercado is down the left field line, taking the throws from an unknown reliever down the left field line as the 0-1 is swung on and missed. No balls, two strikes, you would think. Kennard Jones calling to would be specifically for Charlie Manning. But then Prentice Redmond, Luis Lopez, two right-handed batters. So you would, you would think that the right-handed pitcher would be on the mound down the left field line. This may only be a one batter appearance for Manning. The 0-2. Fastball races high. One ball, two strikes. The outfielders are shifted slightly towards left center field with Jeremy Owens playing that angle. You know how Kennard Jones can hit to the opposite field. The 1-2. Did not go. It appeared to be a curve around the outside corner and dips to the dirt. Two and two. Still no wind. No sign of the wind. It's been carrying a little bit better today. The baseball has than, than the first couple of games of the series. A two two. Chopped on the ground beyond the mound toward short. Paco Figueroa charges and delivers a strike to first in time to end the Bluefish threat. A 6-3 to three ends the inning. A single by Morris, but he was stuck at second base. At the end of six and a half, the game is tied at two. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball, BridgeportBluefish.com. We'll be right back after this. It's not too late to join BB and all of his friends by becoming a member of the Bluefish Snappers Club. The Snappers Club is the newest club for all of the biggest or littlest Bluefish fans. As a member of the Snappers Club, you'll not only get free entrance on Snappers Club Day, but you'll also get a membership card to show all of your friends, plus a special t-shirt that will tell everyone you're a member of the club. After each Sunday home game, baseball punch members will also be invited onto the field to run the bases just like the Bluefish do. You'll even receive a newsletter that will fill you in on all of your favorite Bluefish players or all the news that BB Snappers Club has to offer. To join the coolest club around, call 203-345-4800 or go to richmorebluefish.com slash kids slash snappers to become a member of BB's Snappers Club. Shark Tooth, screwdriver, golf 
team for the golf trip that you never went golfing on. Grill for, doing for, work for, drumsticks, a motel key. Let's not talk about the motel key. You don't know those pliers, a spark plug, a domino, a house key. There's lots of things you can use to open the new Miller Lite Punch Top Can, but you'll always get the same thing. A smooth floor with less club. However you punch it, it's Miller time. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Jeremy Owens leads off the bottom half of the seventh inning from Regency Furniture Stadium in Waldorf, Maryland. The pitching has been stout by both teams today. Matt Pike in his seventh inning of work. He's completed six, but the Bluefish, they have some bullpen action down the right field line, and you wonder how long. Pike will stay. If maybe there's a base runner with the lefties coming up, perhaps in David Espinosa, perhaps Michael Mike Daniel later on. That is when Willie Upshaw will pull the plug on Pike's day. But so far, he's been effective. Six innings, two runs on seven base hits, and no walks. One walk rather to David Espinosa as the first pitch is upcoming from Matthew Pike. He has not struck out many batters. Matter of fact, he's not struck out anybody. First pitch way outside, one ball and no strikes. When he strikes out a decent number of pitcher uh, or hitters, rather, he does, he's not usually as effective as when he is throwing strikes and then inducing ground balls or fly balls. So 1-0, fastball up, two balls and no strikes. Whereas Moore seemed to be the kind of guy that Added a little, subtracted a little, and relies on strikeouts in the first two starts combined. And Matt Pike, complete opposite. The 2-0 on its way to Owens. Pitch. Fastball upstairs. Three balls and no strikes. We'll get to the scoreboard update in just a moment here on BridgeportBluefish.com. Harry Miles here. Bluefish coming back from a 2-0 deficit. A run in the second, Brock Peterson, a run in the sixth as well. The fastball hits the edge. Two, three balls and a strike. And many of the Bluecrest fans staying around and May baseball game on their field trip, enjoying themselves. The three one is swung on and lifted high in the air to deep left. Kennard Jones turns back. He has no chance. That ball is gone. Jeremy Owens turned on the heater inside. And the Blue Crabs have retaken the lead. It's 3-2. to two. Jeremy Owens always seems to have something ready for the Bluefish each time. This time around, there was a solo drive, and he continues for whatever reason. To hit Bluefish pitching very well. That was an elevated pitch. Middle in. And Owens took advantage. First run for the Blue Crab since the first inning as Pike stares in at Paco Figueroa. And he lifts the high fly to deep left center field. On the move, Jones. He will get there. That ball is off the wall. And ricochets towards left center as Figueroa lands at second base with a two bagger. A homer and a double to start off the seventh inning. Michael Morris walking to the mound. Perhaps calm down Matt Pike. Maybe communicate with the right-handed pitcher, but the first two have been scalded. Especially Jeremy Owen's shot. The rest of the games are either later this afternoon, early this evening, or tonight. York against Long Island from Bethpage Ballpark. 
in Long Island, Lancaster, Camden, the first one, 635, Lancaster, Camden, 705, and Sugarland Somerset, also 705 from Patriots Park, TD Bank Ballpark, as Willie Upshaw slowly walks to the mound. You wonder if that was the final hitter of the day for Matt Pike, and it is as Willie Upshaw takes the ball from his right-hander. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. And when we come back on the Bluefish broadcast, it appears that Kyle Zaleski is making his way into the game for the Fish. He's done a tremendous job. We'll talk about him more right after the break on BridgeportBluefish.com. Why do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the pinks of the game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we really love is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Annuities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold the commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling Prudential Annuities employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, New York, New Jersey, and its affiliates. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Inc. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. Kyle Zaleski is on the hill for the Bluefish as he continues to throw on the mound. Tall right-handed pitcher making his way to the hill. He's done an outstanding job so far this year. Kyle had a stretch of nine innings of scoreless baseball. That coming the as part of the first game of the series, or rather of the season, and then Zaleski making his way back. He's thrown two innings in each of his last four games that he has pitched, and he really has not given up much. You wonder whether or not the Bluefish will be able to push across any more runs today with the way that Southern Maryland's pitching staff has been able to perform. They'll have two more innings to at least get one run on the board with Chin Lung Hu at the plate. It appears as if he's showing bunt with the third baseman, Luis Lopez, creeping in for a moment. The first pitch let go by Hu, one ball and no strikes. Remember this as well. Paco Figueroa is very fast. And so even a fly ball may not advance him all the way to third base. One ball and no strikes with nobody out. Pike gave up a solo shot to Owens. The 1-0 slides inside again. Two balls and no strikes. And even if who walks, it still sets up the possibility that David Espinosa would lay down the bunt for Brian Barton. The Bluefish are in a bit of trouble at this point. Down by a run in the bottom of the frame. 2-0. Bunt attempt foul. Two balls, one strike. So the, the action taking place on the Major League side of matters tonight. The Rangers and Capitals in Game 6. If the Rangers win tonight, they will take on the New Jersey Devils in the conference finals. In NBA action, the Knicks are hoping to extend their series against the Heat. Miami leads three games to one. The 2-1. Fun attempt off the third base side. Zaleski fields and throws to first. Handled by Pedro Lopez. We're out. Number one. Sacrifice successful by a count of one to four on the put out. One away for David Espinoza. A long fly ball would score Paco Figueroa. 
and Morris Zaleski discussing the situation at hand. The Clippers and Grizzlies are also tonight. That's a 9.30 start from Memphis. And there are a few games taking place this afternoon in the major leagues. Cincinnati and Milwaukee, a 110 start. Atlanta Braves and Chicago Cubs, a 220 start. 335 opener to Toronto or Oakland, or closer rather. Travel day. Colorado and San Diego, 335. The rest of the games are at night. The one out toss is grounded foul. No balls and one strike. Espinosa is 0 for 1. He hit into a fielder's choice in the first inning, but it was ruled a no play because Pike at that time threw the ball to third to try to get the lead. Runner did not. And grounded out 4 to 3 in the third and walked in the fifth. Next one swung on and whiffed. No balls and two strikes. Z has a power fastball, uses the curve, and he will occasionally use a slider to the righties because he is a right-handed pitcher. But that one poured in right to David Espinosa's hands. The 0-2, rounded fouls as Espinosa stays alive. The runner from third base was breaking. Figueroa wanted to head home on that chopper. Which means you know, no matter what contact Espinosa makes, Figueroa is going to bolt. He already has been caught in the middle of a double play, line drive for perhaps going all. There was not a whole lot of chance he was getting back. 0 2 from Z. Chopped on the ground, foul to the first base side. Count remains at 0 2. The temperatures have warmed in southern Maryland a bit. Temperatures were expected to get to the mid and upper 70s, which is nice weather over here. Not quite what they're experiencing in Texas or Georgia or some of the warmer climates, but the players are comfortable. The bluefish, however, in this situation are not. The 0-2 curveball. Delivered outside. One ball and two strikes. They face this situation a number of times, but they understand what's at stake. If that fourth run comes across, that could be the difference between a win and a loss. The one-two. Fastball away, two balls, two strikes. Remember this also. There are a couple of open bases, although it's doubtful that Zaleski would want to try to get Espinosa to swing at a pitch and pitch around when he was up in the count 0 and 2. Zaleski set the belt. He unleashes, swung on and lifted it to left field. Pretty well hit. Canard Jones cannot play. That ball has to be played off the wall. The run scores. The throw to second, not in time. They play wall ball. David Espinosa with an RBI double. And the Bluefish now down by a couple once more. They're getting a little bit more from their offense today. And the Bluefish are going to need to rely on its offense to come through against the Southern Maryland bullpen. But right, Pike's line is finished. Six plus, allowing four runs. In the contest, when his line is finished, Kyle Zaleski is responsible for the runner at second base with one man out, and part of it had to do with the fact that he was unable to finish off Espinosa when he had him the whole hole in two. A one-out pitch to Barton, slips outside, one ball and no strikes. Going to be very difficult to beat a team with the kind of pitching that the Blue Crabs have every time out simply because you have to match their zeros every single time. When your ERA is three, Blue Crabs have already scored four as the next one is swung on and served to the stands. Ten hits for the Blue Crabs, seven for the Fish. It was a 10-35 first pitch from this venue. And the fans 
are actively involved. It is the bottom of the seventh. Zaleski stares, pitch way outside, and partially blocked by Morris, but it is a wild pitch, allowing Espinosa to move to third. And with that in mind, the infielders must move in to try to keep this a two-run game. Martin a single and a double tonight. Righty righty matchup glove set at the belt. 2 1. Swan and stroked into deep right center field on the move. Prentice Redman, he dives it down into play as it scoops to the wall. Colin DeLore will have to play on the warning track. Barton aiming for three, and he'll get there standing up. It is a run scoring triple for Brian Barton. Southern Maryland now has a 5 to 2 lead. One of the hardest hit balls in this series as the right-handed batter stroked into the right center field gap. Redmond dove and came up disappointed and Kyle Zaleski has allowed a run on his resume with Mike Daniel moving forward. And sometimes those days will not be or some of the breaks will, will work towards the opposing team. Not every squad is going to win every home game or every road game. We're going to go through those bumps and bruises. The one out pitch is low, one ball and no strikes. Going 9-3 through the first 12 games of the season is impressive. I mean, one of the more impressive had the Bluefish gone to 10-3. and three. But right now, Southern Maryland has put up a three spot. The next offering is a check swing that went through the zone by Daniel. One ball, one strike, and it all began with a Jeremy Owens home run. And that's usually how it starts with the Blue Crab. Some positive play by their player coach leading to all the other events unfolding the way that they do. The fastball turns outside, two balls and one strike, and Zaleski seems to be a little bit frustrated, not quite pinning the strikes on the way that he's accustomed to. So far, he's given up two hits and a run. And he has not recorded now as the 2 1 slips outside, three balls and one strike. And then remember this Southern Maryland is horrible as their offense has been. They are still relatively close to where Bridgeport is offensively in terms of run, run score. 3 1. Inside ball four. Three straight batters have reached against Zaleski as he looks to take the ball back with Christian Lopez heading in there. And there's a meeting of the mind to the mound as Willie Upshaw makes his way to the hill as well. There's nobody warming up the bullpen, which means this is Zaleski's game. He has pitched so well in the early going that, yes, one miserable outing could ultimately make his stats look much worse than they actually are. He's not having a, a good deal of success today. He loves pitching and the game of baseball. And he's also giving lessons for golf during the offseason as well. Traveling all over the country. And Zaleski, he understands what the Atlantic League is all about. He was on the squad last year. Willie Upshaw trusts him, but this game has not been one of the better ones he's ever thrown. And if you think about it this way, the Bluefish bullpen in this series has been stout. The Bluefish have allowed a total of eight runs, five of them from the Stars, three of them from the bullpen. There were six innings of relief coming from Bridgeport in game one. And three more in game two. So you take that, nine innings, three-run baseball, it's a three RA. I'm sure anyone will take that, that productivity over the course of a season. 
Christian Lopez moves forward. First pitch inside corner. Strike on one. Christian Lopez's average dips to 391. Heading into the day. But he's 0 for 3 today. Couple of fly balls to center and a fielder's choice 3 to 6. Zaleski stepped off the rubber for a moment before he regains focus. Glove settles at the belt. 0 1, but first. A fake to third, fake to first, as Zaleski reestablishes his presence on the mound by stepping on the rubber. Barton nearly took off after Z faked to first and then stepped on the rubber without any concern for Barton. The uh, one. Grounded towards second. Pedro Lopez snaps the throw to second one out to first. Not in time. The run scores, RBI fielder's choice on the 4-6, to six, and the Blue Crabs have a 6-2 to two lead. Pedro Lopez had to take a little bit more time than he normally would because Eddie Rogers, as he crossed the second base bag, just did not get there quickly enough. And, and Lopez tried to turn as soon as possible, just could not quite get it out of his glove. Combined with Eddie Rogers not there, winds up being a fielder's choice rather than double play. As the runner goes, the pitch is inside for a strike to throw a second, not in time. A stolen base for Christian Lopez. And the uh, Blue Crabs are running rabid on on. Bluefish catchers in this series. Already seven stolen bases in the two plus games. This game is still not over. Zaleski looks at second, and the next offer is grounded foul to the first base side. No balls, two strikes. Jeremy Owens homer, Paco Figueroa double, sacrifice moves him to third, RBI double Espinosa, advances to third on wild pitch, RBI triple right center for Brian Barton. And then a walk and a, and a fielder's choice RBI for Christian Lopez, a stolen base for him. That's where we are at 6-2. to two. Zaleski looks back at second, the 0-2. Down low, one ball, two strikes. The way that Bridgeport handled Long Island this season and the way that Long Island has played since that point will lead you to believe that Southern Maryland is going to be one of those teams contending for the Liberty Division title in the first half. Pitches outside, two balls, two strikes. That is only if their offense is able to produce because their pitching staff has done a tremendous job with the exception of the closer, Jim and Warden. The 1-2 from Zaleski. Pitch on its way. Swung on and missed. Strike three. The inning is over, but the damage has been done. Four runs on four Base hits on runner left on at the end of seven. Bridgeport trails by a score of six to two. Stay tuned. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. The gear shop at the ballpark and Harbor Yard is your one-stop shop for everything Bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your Bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to fear the fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseballs, the gear shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stuffed BB the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark at Harbor Yard and is open on game days. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. 
can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at bridgeportbluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop, perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Miller Lite wants you to win the greatest weekend that's never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Miller Lite taste points for your chance to win one of 100 Vegas trips being given away this summer for the big weekend. So grab Miller Lite and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happened. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where prohibited. Switch stakes begins 5 one 12 and ends 8 one 12 For details, how to enter and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Time. Don't check your wrist or follow up with your supervisor. Because Miller Time has nothing to do with when and everything to do with who. What's up, Tommy? Miller Lite is brewed for the guys you're proud to call your brothers. We'll always talk you out of getting that faux hawk. And never talk. Hey, during your back sweating. Wow. You've got your brother who's in the light beer that tastes like a beer should. It's not just the beer time. It's Miller Time. Right here with responsibility. Bluefish baseball is on the air as the bunt attempt served up the third base side. Bare hand by Padgett. He throws to first in time. One away. Colin DeLone led off the inning with a bunt attempt served up the third base side. But it was handled beautifully by Matt Padgett. One away. And it appears as if the new pitcher in the contest for Southern Maryland is Eduardo Moreland. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. So it winds up being a 5-3 to three for DeLong to set up Prentice Redmond. All the Bluefish need are base runners at this point. One out toss fastball that clips the corner on one. Bluefish have had all kinds of problems against everybody in the bullpen with the exception of Ed Warden. And yesterday they were able to squeak across the run against Brian Doomsman. Pat Osborne has been able to get the right combination on the field at the right time. Pitch served outside the count at one ball, one strike. He has a good feel as to how his pitchers are going to perform. The only difference is his batters have not done the job until today. The next offering tails away. Two balls and one strike. But remember this, the Bluefish offense is able to explode. Do not tempt them. <laughs> the one, the two one is upstairs. Three balls and a strike. Just because Eduardo Moreland had a great outing last time does not mean that he may not provide a poor outing this one. As Redmond strokes it foul just above the press box. Three balls, two strikes. Southern Maryland has been anything but friendly for the Bluefish most of the time. And if they do fall in this contest, 3 2 is outside ball four, then Bridgeport would have a miserable record at this venue. They have not had much success against the Blue Crabs in general over the years because the last couple of seasons the Blue Crabs have made it to the playoffs. In 2010, they made it to the postseason. 2009, they made it to the playoffs. Let's not forget about last year, 2011. So it's three straight years in the playoffs after. 2008, their expansion season. First pitch is on its way from Eduardo Moore to Luis Lopez. It bends inside. One ball and no strikes. So Prentice is on for the third time. He's three, a two for two with a walk and a sacrifice bunt. Not looking to steal at this juncture. Lopez is 0 for 3. Pitch. Fastball. Clips the corner. One ball and one strike. Some fans have made their way to the grassy knoll in right center field to watch the game, enjoy themselves. 75 degree day. Overcast conditions in the D.C. area. No one more. Fastball on the inside corner. One ball and two strikes. Very difficult for, the, for any team to come back from four runs down, especially this late in the contest. No one, two. Lifted foul. Lopez slightly out in front. 
as Moreland applied his breaking pitch. The post game show is coming up following the conclusion of the ball game. Scores and summaries from around the Atlantic League. And what's going to unfold later today in the big leagues. Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL. One, two. Rennett softly towards third. Padgett gathers, throws to second for one. Out to first, double play. That ends the inning. A 5-4-3 to the second time that Lopez is grounded into a double play. The Bluefish are out of the eighth. At the end of seven and a half, Bridgeport trails by a score of 6-2. to two. Stay tuned. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball on BridgeportBluefish.com. Skeleton Key. Golf team from the golf trip that you never went golfing on. Grill for it. Two eight four. Fork fork. The lucky fish you know you snagged Alan with. Sorry, Alan. Trump sticks. Chopsticks from the place you met that Dallas based flight attendant. A motel key. Let's not talk about the motel key. The spark plug. The domino. The house key. How do these things make Miller Light from a can even better? Find out May 2012. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Why do we love baseball? Is it the uniforms, the baseball game, the mascots? Could be. Or could it be that what we want to do is that baseball reminds us how we can all come out ahead when we work together, just like a good team. At Prudential Abilities, we understand that when everyone works together, good things can happen. That's why each year, we uphold the commitment to helping charitable causes in our community by pitching in financial resources and by enabling provincial abilities and employees to help others through volunteer work. From conducting mentoring programs and helping homeless shelters to supporting health awareness and food banks, Prudential Annuities is more than a big company in Fairfield County. We're a big part of the community, too. Prudential Annuities, going to bat for the community. The Prudential Insurance Company of America, Newark, New Jersey, and its affiliates. Prudential Annuities is a business of Prudential Financial Aid. At Miller Lite, we believe if you're not choosing a light beer with more taste, you need to man up, not man down. Because up is way better than down. You don't tell someone sad that you're down. What's down, dog? A steamy pile and you just stepped in it. Your girlfriend's not wearing a push-down bra. It's called gravity, Isaac Nitwit. Can I be down front with you? All this down talk is bringing me down. So don't man down. Man up and choose a light beer with more taste. Triple hops brewed Miller Lite. Taste great. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. The title Coors Light Summer. It's a Coors Light Summer. We welcome you back to the Bluefish Broadcast. Perry Miles here. Jesse English is in the game. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. Left-hander earned, well, not earned, picked up is probably the more appropriate term. He gave up two runs in two-thirds of an inning, but he picked up his second victory of the season yesterday as the first pitch is swung on and dribbled towards second. Pedro Lopez gathers on an arc and throws to first in time went away. He drifted from the second base area on an arc just to, to the right of the second base bag. If you're looking from behind the from behind the plate, and as he crossed beyond the second base bag, he was able to work with the throw on the move. So Richard Giannotti is now one for four on the night, uh, oh for four on the night rather, and brings up Jeremy Owens. Home run, six three and a P four on the score sheet for Jeremy Owens. He already has two homers in this series playing a, a big impact on, on the success of this team. No one out toss. Slides over the middle. 0 and 1. Bridgeport would need four runs to come back. And it appears as if Southern Maryland is getting one of its pitchers loose. Not Eduardo Moreland. As Jeremy Owens fouls it back out of play. They'll be on the broadcast booth actually to the right. And then it falls down. Baseball fell down off the roof. No balls and two strikes. The pitcher who's waiting out there is Chris Mobley. That is no balls, two strikes. It's lifted high in the air to shallow right field, handled by Prentice Redmond. 
far away. Jeremy Owens now one for four on the night. After the F9 in Springs, Paco Figueroa has reached base all four times, three singles and a double. Great time for Figueroa as English deals. Pitch slap foul right side. No balls, one strike. So Chris Mobley is warming up in the pen. He's a more likely going to get a chance to try to give the blue fish uh, give the blue crabs its first victory of the series by entering the ninth. And if you take a careful look at how Southern Maryland has been able to perform. With the bullpen, it is incredible as the next pitch settles low. You look at the overall stats for the bullpen. I mean, Ricky Barrett, three games, zero ERA. Mobley, five, five and a third innings of scoreless baseball. Moreland, now nine and a third scoreless, the one one, chopped on the ground to the right side. Pedro Lopez moves in and makes the play as he was able to charge forward and deliver the lollipop throw for the final out, 4-3. to three. But the Bluefish, they are down to their final three outs, as it appears as if Mobley might be entering the game right after this. You're listening to Bluefish Baseball, BridgeportBluefish.com. We'll be right back, 6-2, to two, Southern Maryland. Toward the kitchen, a refreshment I could see. But after swinging open the fridge, I saw the most horrific sight. Not a single cold beverage, not a single Coors Light. I grabbed my keys, it was time to hit the store. But stopped when I heard a knock at the door. It was my girlfriend, bearing gifts of Coors Light. Best girlfriend ever? I got that right. Ross Food Coors Light. Refreshing deal. Coors Brewing Company from Colorado. Bring me a responsibility. At Miller Lite, we believe if you're not choosing a light beer with more taste, you need to man up, not man down. Because up is way better than down. You don't tell someone sad that you're down. What's down, dog? A steamy pile and you just stepped in it. Your girlfriend's not wearing a push-down bra. It's called gravity, Isaac Midwit. Can I be down front with you? All this down talk is bringing me down. So don't man down. Man up and choose a light beer with more taste. Triple Hops Brewed Miller Lite. Tastes great. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. A poem entitled Coors Light Summer. It's a Coors Light Summer, hot base all around. Backyard barbecues are where you'll be found. It gets pretty hot out, but it'll be all right, because coolers are filled with ice cold Coors Light. You step outside, many skirts galore. Be your garden for the ball game, that's what's in store. It's going to be a scorcher, but there's hope in sight. Refreshment awaits, Frost Brew Coors Light. Hey, Frost Brew Coors Light, your most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden Colorado, with a great beer country responsibility. Um, how's that wind blowing tonight? Because, uh, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it helped. Bluefish are down to their final three outs of the contest. This call to the bullpen presented by Prudential Annuities. Prudential Annuities going to bat for our community. It is Ramon Vasquez leading off for the Bluefish. The first pitch from Mobley settles to the dirt. One ball and no strikes. It's not quite the way that the Bluefish had envisioned this game unfolding. I'm sure it is exactly the way that Southern Maryland envisions winning its games this year as the fastball turns to the outside corner, one ball and one strike. It's all about whose lens you're looking through. The 1-1, one, one. swung on and pulled foul in the right field line, big cut, and Vasquez, a ball and two strikes. And over the next couple of days, the Bluefish will not be able to hit on the field, especially with kids' days and, of course, early games. There's a 
There's a 10.35 a.m. game tomorrow and an 11 o'clock game as the basket swings and misses over the top for strike three. He is 0 for 4 on the day. As Christian Lopez waves his finger like Dikembe Mutombo, but the intent is not to intimidate or to taunt. The intent was to indicate to all the infielders and outfielders how many batters were out. One away for Brock Peterson. And Michael Morris would be the last batter due up in the ninth. Mobley deals. First pitch fastball lands away. One ball and no strikes. Mobley in his career in AAA baseball of Hickory, North Carolina. He reached his AAA baseball in his career with the Cincinnati Reds last year with the Louisville Bats. Mobley deals on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Bluegrass playing very deep, no level defense, as always. The next pitch, swung and slapped down the right field line. It's deep. That ball heads towards the corner. It is a base hit and rolls towards the wall. Peterson stops at second with another extra base hit. He has three extra base hits in the game, a pair of doubles and a home run. That ball came within a few feet of getting towards the warning track with one away. Michael Morris steps up. Remember, if another base runner gets on, the tying run would be in the on-deck circle. A four-run lead is different from five runs in the sense that a grand slam would tie the game. In the four-run lead, five-run lead would not happen. One man out. Moore steps in, one for three, single last at bat. Lovely deals, and the curveball spins away and gets away from the catcher Christian Lopez as Peterson moves to third. Mobley and the catcher Christian Lopez having a brief conversation, putting his shoulder, his arm on his shoulder, make sure everything's okay. Remember, the York Revolution had a hard time. Bluefish were down by four runs heading into the ninth inning. And the Bluefish were able to get the bases loaded within two runs before York's pitching was able to limit Bridgeport's hitting. And the next pitch is swung on and fouled to the net. One ball and one strike. One man out. The next offering. Check swing did not go around. Two balls and one strike. The Bluefish have, have struggled on the offensive side, getting many hits against Southern Maryland. Not too many 10-hit nights against this team. The 2-1, fastball on the inside corner, 2-2. Two and two. Pedro Lopez is waiting on deck. He would get a shot if Morris did not hit into a double play. 2-2 delivery upcoming for Mobley. Pitch way inside and high. It gets by Peterson. Scampers to the plate. The throw is not in time. And the Bluefish get on the board in the ninth inning. Boy, that was a couple of wild pitches. No chance for Christian Lopez to really get it. He needed to, he needed to leap high in the air just to get any of those pitches. It's 6-3. Count it. Three balls and two strikes. To Morris. So Mobley has already given up a run. 3 2. Swung on and missed. Strike three. So he recovers from that slight mishap to strike out Morris. Would appear to be a pitch diving down. And brings Pedro Lopez to the plate. The Bluefish are down to their final out. They would need Lopez to reach and Eddie Rogers to reach to potentially send up the tying run as the two out tosses way outside. One ball, no strikes. Pedro Lopez understands that. He's 0 for 3 today. Bottom of the order. Bottom 3, just 1 for 10. 1-0, uh, slice low. Two balls, no strikes. And when you don't get productivity from the bottom, and Luis Lopez and Ramon Vasquez go combined 0 for 8, it can be a problem. 2-0, way inside, three balls and no strikes. 
Mobley's all over the place. Will the Bluefish be able to take advantage of his of his wild fastball? The 3-0. Low ball four. Pedro Lopez walks. The tying run is on deck. As Reggie Harris, the bench coach, makes his way to the mound. That has to be a bit concerning for Southern Maryland. They were on the brink of, of winning the game. They give up, Mobley gives up a run. He walks a batter, Pedro Lopez. Eddie Rogers up to the plate. He's a patient guy. If it gets to Kennard Jones, is it conceivable that the Bluefish might be able to make their way back? They've had late rallies before against Southern Maryland. It happened yesterday with two runs in the ninth inning. This tells you everything that you need to know about the Blue Crabs. Their starting pitching gets the job done. Their middle relief is very good. But they have yet to find a closer. Perhaps Eduardo Moreland is the next one in line. As Mobley stands in, Eddie Rogers steps up, pitch way outside, and it bounced just to the right of Lopez. One ball, no strikes. Will Pat Osborne look down the third baseline and indicate for somebody to get warm? He's hoping to get one more out of Mobley. The one out of Rogers, pitch. Outside and low, two balls, no strikes. Rogers, wait for the 2 0. Oh, there's a strike on the outside corner. Two balls and one strike. May have been about knee high as Rogers was waiting for the perfect pitch. 2 1 to Rogers. Offer. Fastball directed to the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. Rogers could not believe that. He smiles in disagreement. The 2-2 from Mobley. Swung on, jam shot. Lukert sent to the right side. And the second baseman turned on the road for Rouse for the final out of the ball game. The Blue Crabs have won by a score of 6-3 to three at Regency Furniture Stadium. The post-game show comes to you right after this on BridgeportBluefish.com. Salary between real pork chops. Getting hungry? 
your table awaits at the Park City Grill, Fairfield County's elegant new dining spot in the beautifully renovated Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Comfortable, warm, and inviting, Park City Grill offers a world-class dining experience at reasonable prices. Come to the Park City Grill, 1070 Main Street in the Bridgeport Holiday Inn. Take I-95, exit 27A to exit 2. Plenty of free, secure parking. Gear Shop at the ballpark at Harbor Yard is your one-stop shop for everything bluefish. Take a break from the action and check out all your bluefish souvenir favorites. From men's and women's t-shirts and a wide selection of home, road, and other trendy hats, to fear the fin rally towels, team photos, and commemorative baseball. The Gear Shop has it all. Don't forget about our kids' wear section, game-worn jerseys, even your own stuffed BB the Bluefish, and more. The Bluefish Gear Shop is located on the third base side of the concourse level at the ballpark at Harbor Yard and is open on game days. Come and browse all your favorite Bluefish apparel from an hour before the first pitch until the final out is made. Can't make it to the ballpark on game day but still want to support Fairfield County's only professional baseball team? Then check out the new Bluefish online store at bridgeportbluefish.com or call 203-345-4800 to schedule an appointment. The Bluefish Gear Shop. Perfect gifts for all ages and all sizes. Located at the ballpark at Harbor Yard, 500 Main Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Miller Lite wants you to win the greatest weekend that never happened. The ultimate Vegas weekend for you and a buddy. Just collect Miller Lite taste points for your chance to win one of 100 Vegas trips being given away this summer for the big weekend. So grab Miller Lite and seize the summer at tastepoints.com. It's that easy, and it never happened. It's Miller time. No purchase necessary. Open to legal U.S. residents 21 or older. Void in California and where prohibited. Sweepstakes begins 5 one 12 and ends 8 one 12 For details on winner and complete official rules, go to tastepoints.com. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Time. Don't check your wrist or follow up with your supervisor. Because Miller Time has nothing to do with when and everything to do with who. What's up, Tommy? Miller Lite is brewed for the guys you're proud to call your brothers. We'll always talk you out of getting that faux hawk. And never talk. During your back swing. When you've got your brothers and the like beer that tastes like a beer should. It's not just a beer time. It's Miller Time. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Lite Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Miller time. It's a rally you cry to the men around you, the ones that have become your brothers. The call to beer is answered with Order me a Miller Lite over here again. The night when your crew gets down to the task at hand that may or may not involve running tables, oh, and I say, and firing up the grill, oh, oh, oh. Nice. And getting the band back together. Two, three, five. Just a few choice words spoken to the right man, and then you crave a light beer that's never light on taste. Because it's not just a good time, it's Miller time. We bring here the lunch going to Miller Beer Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We call this little ditty, America's past home. Summer's here, it feels pretty nice. Baseball and hot dogs and refreshment on ice. Some games are early, some are at night. There's always a beer man with ice cold, cool as light. He's the most reliable player in the game. All it takes is calling his name, so even if your team doesn't hit any diggers, you'll have frost-brewed refreshment and the tips of your fingers. Thank you. Frost Brewing Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, with great beer company responsibility. I call this one best girlfriend ever. It has been a long day and an even longer week, so I headed toward the kitchen, refreshment I did seek. But after swinging open the fridge, I saw the most horrific sight. Not a single cold beverage, not a single Coors Light. I grabbed my keys, it was time to hit the store, but stopped when I heard a knock at the door. It was my girlfriend, bearing gifts of Coors Light. Best girlfriend ever? You got that right. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, with great beer and great responsibility. Bluefish Baseball is back. Bluefish Baseball is here on the Bluefish Broadcast Network. Perry Miles, final score from Southern Maryland. The Bluef Crabs defeat the Bluefish by a score of 6-3. to three. Bluefish go to 9-4, and four, while Southern Maryland moves to 7 wins and 6 losses. And the, t- the standings will be ultimately determined, or how far ahead the Bridgeport will be, will be determined upon the results of Long Island and York today, combined with Camden, where they will be as well. Let's take a look at the box score quickly. One hit and a run for Kennard Jones, a hit for DeLome, two hits for Redmond, RBI for Lopez, nothing for Vasquez or Lopez in the hit column. Peterson, three hits, two runs in an RBI. Morris, a hit. Lopez and Eddie Rogers with no hits on the day. Three runs on eight base hits with no errors. Six runs and 11 base hits with one error for Southern Maryland. Four hits 
and two runs for Figueroa, who one hit and a run. Espinosa a hit, a run, and an RBI. Three hits and a run with two RBI for Barton Daniel. RBI, Lopez and RBI. Padgett with a hit. Gianni with nothing. And Owens, one hit, one run, one RBI. But it probably catapulted the, Mer the Southern Maryland squad to victory today because it broke the tie. Matt Pike with six innings in the loss, six innings of work for the right-hander. And he... Also gave up four runs, nine hits, and a walk. He did not strike out anybody. Kyle Zaleski, an inning, two runs. Both earned two hits, a walk, and a strikeout. Jesse English, an inning, pitched, and nothing across for English. Moore, five and two-thirds innings, six hits, two runs. Both earned five strikeouts. LaGuardia, an inning, pitched, a hit, and a strikeout. Charlie Manning picks up the victory. A third of an inning of scoreless relief to end the threat in the seventh inning at that time as the game was tied at two. Eduardo Moreland with an inning of shutout baseball to walk. Mobley gives up a hit and a run in an inning of work. It was not earned on a walk and two strikeouts. But as it turned out, the Bluefish still wound up losing by a count of 6-3. to three. Time of the game, 2 hours and 42 minutes. Attendance today, 30-31 from Regency Furniture Stadium in this ball game. Seven, eight strikeouts for Southern Maryland staff and one for Bridgeport staff. DeLone with one, Lopez, Luis Lopez, Vasquez, Morris with three, Eddie Rogers with two, and Matt Padgett with one. Four total walks, two for each side. Redmond and Lopez for Bluefish, Pedro Lopez, that is, and Espinosa and Daniel for the home team. A couple of doubles today for the Bluefish, well, three doubles for the Bluefish today. Kennard Jones with one, Brock Pierce with two. Figueroa with his fourth double, Espinosa his sixth, Barton his second, Padgett his first, Barton with his second triple of the year, home run from Brock Peterson his second, Jeremy Owens his third, RBI, Luis Lopez his eighth, Brock Peterson his fourth, Espinosa his fifth, Barton with two, he has two, Daniel with his fifth, Lopez with his third, Owens with his ninth, error, uh, stolen base rather from Christian Lopez his second, Figueroa had his third, error, Bridgeport left six runners on, Mar Southern Maryland at seven, overall double plays, there were two turned by Southern Maryland and one by Bridgeport as the Bluefish fall by a score of 6-3. to three. The rest of the postgame show is upcoming right here on BridgeportBluefish.com. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Baseball is different in a lot of ways where the history of the sport means so much. Uh, and, and it's something we should never, you know, never forget. And I think the Hall of Fame has a way of reminding us. At any time uh, that I've visited, it's just like, like a little kid. You people at the Hall of Fame have done a great job of uh, preserving the history of the game. Celebrate the game. Celebrate the passion. Connect with Cooperstown at BaseballHall.org. Jimmy Rollins talks about the Baseball Hall of Fame. This man in the same place that all those great football players, you know, reside at now. Their their career, you'll find stats, their jerseys, their helmets, their cleats, and have something of mine. That is something that anybody that goes to the Hall of Fame can see. Preserving history, honoring excellence, connecting generations at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York. Connect with Cooperstown at baseballhall.org. Behind everything you're searching for is something you're actually looking for. When you search with the real yellow pages, you get more than a contractor. You get a whole new curb appeal. It's not just getting directions to a dry cleaner like YP.com. It's rescuing an old favorite from the back of the closet. And it's more than finding a locksmith at YP.com on your mobile. It's getting to sleep in your own bed. Whatever it might be, there are more ways to search and more ways to find exactly what you're looking for. With the real yellow pages, YP.com and YP.com on your mobile. Only from AT&T. The YP.com website is your local search engine. If you're looking for a good restaurant, it can help you find the right one nearby with ratings and reviews. Or if your car breaks down, you can use the YP app to find the closest repair shop. Or maybe you're just looking for something to do on a Friday night. Well, it has great local coupons for all sorts of things in your area. No matter what, when, or where, if you're looking for something, YP Local Search can help you find it. So go to YP.com or download the app to search local, find local, and save local. This is Terry McGriff, pitching coach for the Bridgeport Bluefish, and you're listening to Paramount. Bluefish baseball is back on the air. The rest of the games in the Atlantic League are taking place tonight. One of them taking place at Beth Page Ballpark between the Long Island Ducks and the York Revolution. Another contest taking place 
at TD Bank Ballpark between Sugar Land and Somerset. The final one of the night, Lancaster and Camden. That taking place in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania as the Bluefish get ready to go to Camden after tomorrow's game. 6-3, to three, the final score from here. The Bluefish fall to 9-4. and four. Southern Maryland proves to 7-6. and six. Bluefish have a chance to win the series tomorrow. As let's go to the rest of the scores from around the NBA, NHL, and Major League Baseball in the NBA. The Knicks and the Heat taking place at 7 o'clock tonight. The Clippers and the Memphis Grizzlies at 9.30 tonight. In the NHL docket, the Rangers and the Capitals. Game 6 from Washington, 7.30 start. And the Rangers have a 3-2 to two lead. They'll be looking forward to try to close out and perhaps taking on the New Jersey Devils in that contest. Cincinnati and Milwaukee, scoreless bottom of the second inning. Atlanta and Chicago later today. Toronto and Oakland later today. Tampa Bay and the Yankees, 7 o'clock start. Mets and Philly, 7.05. Red Sox, Kansas City Royals at 8.10. Those are the scores from around Major League Baseball and all the news stories, which includes Josh, <laughs> Josh Hamilton. Slip clobbering four two-run home runs in Baltimore last night to lead his team to a big victory against the Orioles as Josh Hamilton continues to swing very well at the plate. He's one of the best players in baseball, and he ultimately showed that last night. The Bluefish fall 6-3. to three. This is the postgame show. I am Perry Miles. We'll be back tomorrow for a 10-15 pregame, for a 10-35 first pitch, from Regency Furniture Stadium, as the Bluefish look to take three out of four, they'll throw Isaac Hess to the hill against Michael Schlacht. Hess this season has been quite successful, and so has Schlacht as Southern Maryland and Bridgeport will not see each other for a few weeks, as the Bluefish will be heading home to take on Sugarland after the Somerset series. We'll take on Sugarland and then follow up with a follow-up meeting against the Skeeters at their at the ballpark at Harbor Yard. The next time the Bluefish will be at home, May 18th. That is the post-Mother's Day celebration weekend, along with the Wade's Dairy photo giveaway. So come to the ballpark for that on the 20th of May as the Bluefish celebrate Mother's Day post with post-Mother's Day celebration and the photo giveaway and all-day family fun Sunday. Thank you for tuning in. Have a wonderful night. We will see you Tomorrow, 10.15, for a 10.35 first pitch.